This is the Sports Den with Denny Thompson and James Coleman on 1010XL 92.5 FM. Good afternoon. This is on Big Game James 36 of the Sports Den coming to you live from the Thin MD Med Spa Studios brought to you by ABC Fine Wine and Spirits. Again, right now, Denny Thompson is he's going to probably be a little bit late. Um, unfortunately, um, he's attending the funeral of a friend of the Sports Den um, in Derek Washington. So, um, again, our hearts and you know, our thoughts go out to his family. Great, um, great guy, especially on the music scene. Uh, he, a, a year ago, we were we were all partying it up for my um my birthday. So it's unfortunate, you know. But hey, things happen. Um, um, I'm sure a lot of great stories are being shared, and a lot of things are going on. So Denny will be here. Me is right now. It's me, the intern, and at Radio Wiz, um, Scott. We're gonna hold it down here. Um, right now. We're going to bring to you the six points, and hopefully it's six points. It might be more than that. But, yeah, I'm going to give intern props. I'm going to give him some good, solid props this um today because we, we gave him a hard time, a, a really hard time last show. My man stepped it up. He came in here with some points, and a lot of them were the same points that I was peeping and that we were thinking about. But it was, it was just a – I'm impressed by him doing his job. Now, I'm not one of those guys who's going to give a participation trophy or anything for doing what you're supposed to do. But considering he hasn't done it, he's done a good. He's did a really good job here now. And I dropped the ball from the Facebook live feed, so I don't have my laptop. But he is sacrificing his cell phone. So if you go to to the at Sports Den underscore live on Facebook, or just look up the Sports Den on Facebook, you can be able to check out the show um, from the Facebook live feed. Or you know, make sure you're listening to Ten Ten XL nine two five. Um, you can stream it online, or you can listen to it in your car. But the six points brought to you by Six Points of Jacksonville, Denny's um, quarterback training company. You can train with them or tra- don't train with them. It doesn't really, really matter to them, I guess. Um, you know, I, I, you'll never hear a boost sports performance um, thing like that. I want all y'all, all you guys training with me because, you know, like I said, I make white kids fast. That's what I do. But six points here. It would be remiss if we don't talk about um, the Gators and Dante Fowler Jr. and, and his arrest and – We'll, we'll get into some points with that. I'm going to try to see how long I can wait before um, Denny gets into that. O.J. Simpson, we've got to talk about that in, in the firestorm and how much attention that 70-year-old can still get to this day. It's just amazing. Um, you know, something that's non-sports related, we'll go um, Usher and R. Kelly. Uh, just interesting things like that just to get people's opinion on that. Uh, Kyrie Irving. In the and and believe land in the in the drama that's associated right now. What the hell is going on there? Michael Phelps is um pulling his Jim McElwain impression. Um, instead of you know we'll we'll get into that. Our a friend of the sports den, good friend of the sports den, Malik Jackson. In his prediction, is he going to get tested by the NFL based upon things that he said, or we'll 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 get into that. Um, and then. We also got to talk about Hugh Freeze being escorted out of uh, Ole Miss, out of Ole Miss um, abruptly, um, and, and different things like that. And does he deserve what happened? And where do we go from there now? But so those are the, those are the six points that we're going to get into. Uh, plus, I think it's an extra point. It might be seven, but we'll get into Dante Fowler, O.J. Simpson, Kyrie Irving, Michael Phelps, Malik Jackson, Hugh Freeze, and we're going to find a little time to get in some. Um, some good R and B, um, some great R and B singers that are in trouble, and why they're in trouble, and and what's going on with those guys. Um, before we get into that, just always the introductions, just about what's going on, just updates on some past things that we've talked about. Um, I still having issues, man, with this with this police officer in my neighborhood. So it's, it's interesting. This man, I almost hit him today, and it's not like I try, like I told you guys about Leonard Hamilton, but he was pulling some. He decided that he wanted to block. The middle of the intersection, the middle of the street, pulling somebody else over, and he's just standing there in the middle of the, in, in the middle of the road. Like we got to get this this guy's out of control. It's out of hand. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand why he's doing this. Why he's terrorizing people on a Saturday. The last thing I want to do on a Saturday is my is my job. That's why we're doing radio. This isn't what I do for a living. Um, well, I guess kind of now. I mean, I, we get paid fifteen cent an hour. The guys with the den. Scott gets paid a little bit more because he's a veteran. But the last thing I want to do. When on my time off is to be is to work unless you really really just love your job man he could he could be one of those guys but he's just a he's a problem to me he's just 
just just bothers me. He just wakes up in the morning saying, who can I write tickets to today? Pretty much. That's what it <laughs> seems like. And, like, his attitude is just, like, he's like he's a menace. He's like Den- he's a Dennis the Menace where a cop. It'd be this guy right here. He just wakes up just like, hey, man, I, I, I think I just – I think I just want to bother these people who who not only pay for me to be here, but now they got to pay the county because I write them a ticket. So those those are different things. Um, Denny's around here training all types of quarterbacks. I mean, I, when he gets when he comes in, we'll talk about how his week has week has been. But you know, he's over here training j- every new Jaguar. It seems like that's coming up here. He's around here catching passes for him. It looked like he almost threw his shoulder out. Like so, y'all pray for him. And in the health of it, I mean, I know he's a quarterback coach, but kind of like I'm a speed coach, like the last thing I want to do is race some of my clients, like because some of them are really, really fast and they have taught, they have taken very well to um, Sensei's um, commands. The um, Denny, Denny shouldn't be throwing the football. Like it, it's not pretty. It, it doesn't. It, it's a spiral. He's got. He's got the. His arm strength is is a little bit. It's, it's about par for Florida University of Florida quarterbacks. It's not very good. Can't throw it over twenty, but it's tight. But that twenty yards inside that twenty yard window, he's gunning that bad boy. So, those are the things we'll get to. We'll definitely get to the text line. The text line's already popping off. Um, I see Cabby right here. Um, you know, he's 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 texting in. We got some people talking about Dante Fowler already in in the ticket situation. Actually, that's a great question. I wonder if is is I'm going to try to interview this officer. Um as polite as possible. I'm afraid to kind of pull to the side of him because he's giving me so many tickets. He may write me a ticket for trying to question him, but I wonder if he's the guy who's been setting Dante Fowler up because he just seems like he would have nothing but enjoy, nothing but enjoyment from that. Anyways, we're right up against it. We're going to take our first break here. Make sure you call um, call 904-641-1010 or text the Duval Ford text line. Same number, 904-641-1010. Any comments, questions you have, try to stay on. Try to. I'm not going to encourage you to not ABC and chill and be a typical sports den um, caller. But if you call in, let's try to keep it to the topic that we're talking about, so we don't have to like go back. At least go at least one topic away. We don't want to go back five topics. I don't want to be talking about in my R. Kelly Usher thing, and now you want to talk about Dante Fowler, which was five seg- five segments ago. But anyways, call again, 904-641-1010. Make sure you hit us up. We'll be right back. God, I might have to put you on, man. This is terrible. How did that, how was that, Scott? What's that? How was that for one guy? Not too bad. It's it's tough doing a, a monologue compared to a dialogue. Yeah. So. But you got the uh, the six points in and everything. So. Seven. Yeah. yeah. Plus the actual point. Six plus one. Seven. I don't know. He said he'll be late, though. Yeah. <laughs> Smith says solo dolo. That's what it looked like. Damn, I am a phone like that. He won't be solo for that much longer. So, what you want to talk about first? Talk about OJ. What you got an opinion on? I can talk Kyrie, my Jags, obviously. I share not Kelly a little bit. All right, we'll get on there. We'll talk about it. We'll go on to talk about basketball. We'll get it out of the way. All right, thanks.
Scott, Scott, you got this one on right here. What's that? You got that. You got that mic on. Yeah. Turn it on. to the Sports Den on 1010XL 92.5 FM. This is the Sports Den. Brought to you on 92.5 1010XL right here. This is at Big Game James 36 at Denny underscore Thompson on Twitter. Um, he is not here yet. He should be on the way. Make sure you go follow us. Go follow all of the different things that we have. Um, again, that's at Sports Den underscore live on pretty much all of them. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that jazz. I'm at Big Game James 36. Um, pretty much for practically on everything. Um, uh, you can follow me on Facebook if you want to. Probably blow up your timeline. But Instagram and Twitter are all hilarious. Um, at Denny underscore Thompson on Twitter. At Six Points Jacks on Instagram and all that good stuff. Again, this is uh, at the Sports Den. Brought to you by ABC Fine Wine and Spirits. We're inside, which is something that we haven't really been able to say. Over the past over the past month, um, the Thin MD Mess Ball Studios. Make sure you go check them out. That's everybody keeps asking and looking at pictures from last year with both me and Denny and trying to figure out what the hell happened. And no, I'm definitely not fasting. I, I, I can't. I would be lying to you if I told you that I haven't been drinking. But I will say, give all credit to Doctor Capasso. Um, it's working with us, kind of following the plan. If you actually go and follow the plan, you will have amazing results way better than ours and again like i said ours is coming from us doing our freestyling plan and getting cussed out every monday when we go in there to do our weigh-ins but speaking of cussed out and doing different things let's talk about what's going on in cleveland what we, we're doing right now we're going to give him a prep he may be banned for another month from this opportunity but we're going to see if he can give a somewhat of opinion we've got he doesn't have a name yet he has to earn his name but we'll just call him the intern. The intern is going to go over here and share the mic because it's kind of boring having a monologue. I want to have a discussion with somebody, even if his comments 
may come off. I'm not 100 percent sure if his comments are going to come off dumb or if they're going to come off pretty well informed. But we're going to give him a chance. So we're going to say what's up to the world. Man, what's up, man? I'm the, I'm the new intern. Y'all follow me on Twitter at Robert Kemp Jr. One on Twitter, Robert Kemp Jr. on Facebook, Robert underscore KJR on Instagram. I'll follow you back. All, All right, right, cool. Let's get him some likes. He's got like 45 people on Twitter. We gotta step that. We gotta step his Twitter game up. So, uh, get that. Let's talk a little bit about something that we don't talk about in basketball. But we're only gonna talk about it because it's interesting, and we're only gonna talk about it this segment. I wanted to get it out of the way before Denny comes in, because I know Denny has absolutely no clue who, what, what is going on. He probably doesn't even know that there are other players on, on the Cleveland Cavaliers besides LeBron James. But right now, Kyrie, the big news coming out of Cleveland is Kyrie Irving saying that he wants out. And he's looking to go to pretty much anywhere, even if they're not necessarily a contender. He wants to go to New York. He wants to go to Miami. He's talking about Minnesota, um, a couple of different places. And it's just... What is, what the hell is going on? That's really what what I want to know is what happened. What are your thoughts? People saying Kyrie want to be traded because he want to be a focal point guard. He wants the ball more. I guess he's just tired of late in the game, LeBron dribbling the ball up the court and jacking up a shot. I guess he wants he wants the ball more in his hands. And you look, when you look at the teams that he's reportedly considering, the Spurs, all they have is Tony Parker. The Knicks, well, they got nothing. The Heat, they got Goran Dragic, who got a blown up eye, so no one really cares what Goran Dragic. And the Timberwolves now, see that's an interesting one because if he goes to the Timberwolves, that might be your that might be your super team. People talk about Golden State being a super team, and LeBron always having super teams. How, what about that irony? If LeBron always talking about super teams, Kyrie, if he joins the Timberwolves, that's going to be a super team. Nah, not at all. That's going to be a super. Kyrie team. is good, and Kyrie's going to get his points. But Kyrie, Uncle Drew, Uncle Drew, is basically he's he's a he's a he's he's not able to carry a team by himself, which is one of the, the bad things. And again, the Minnesota Timberwolves have three very talented players, but not one guy who can actually take over the game. For all LeBron's faults, he is still the best player in the world. So I mean, yes, Golden State had to get the the third, the second, the third, the second, the fourth the ninth and the 12th best player in the world in order to beat them. And they still, they still really, it should have still went seven, but it didn't. But so, I mean, but it's still, LeBron was that good to be able to do what he needed to do. And the, at the end of the day, Kyrie has really no leverage in this deal because he can only wish to where he goes. So if he goes to Minnesota, their Minnesota is going to have to give up a primetime player in order to get Kyrie and picks. Really, the most likely destination, which is going to be, which is going to suck for him, is going to be New York. Yep. And when that happens with New York, they're going to get mellow and they're going to get draft picks. So what's going to happen is Cleveland is still going to be the better team. The only problem is, is that you now don't know what's going to happen to Cleveland next summer. Will LeBron do the decision type, the decision three or whatever? Will he go to L.A. Now it make all of the rumblings that people have been saying kind of make sense. Mm -hmm. They didn't make sense before, but now they do. And, again, LeBron's got five more years where he's going to be able to do whatever he whatever it is that he wants to do. And anytime you get a top player, it does give you an opportunity to start talking championships. But, again, I still like – the only reason Golden State works is because Golden State has a bunch of stars that aren't just stars in their own, that, in their own right. Before KD got there, their team was still dope. They all came up through the system. They know how to play together. That The one thing we've learned from both of these decisions is that it, it's a learning curve when you put a bunch of superstars on the team and they have to learn how to play together. Yeah, see, see the thing is, though, I think that if Kyrie does leave, then I think potentially LeBron could leave because what does he have left? The Cavs have no money. They have no draft picks. They keep signing these old guys who mm -hmm. were maybe stars maybe back in the day, but now they come and join their team to be backups. I mean, what do they have left if Kyrie leaves? Well, no, in a year we we're gonna be now in a year we're gonna be talking about LeBron. LeBron's yeah. out. Yeah, because I mean he he has nothing left. Tristan Thompson he can't shoot. Kevin Love gets hurts too much. Gerald Smith is Gerald Smith. Yeah, he's yeah he's Gerald Smith. So he he doesn't have much help. The question is though, if Kyrie leaves, where will LeBron go? That'll be the question. Yeah, and then so. we know LeBron is LeBron. He'll go anywhere. He can go anywhere and go attract the big and, and attract the big money. 
Um, but yeah, just even with that, there's so many other. The one thing I'll say that the super team, I hate really hate that term because that's the NBA. It's been the NBA for a while. Just people haven't really recognized it. Most of the times, it wasn't the players doing; it was the GMs doing. But Boston's got a good team coming around. Um, Minnesota's doing their thing. If um, two places that Carmelo could still end up, Houston or Portland, if that happens, those are good. Those are going to be teams that are going. Heck, Philly is on Philly. If they can get people to actually just stay healthy, could actually be they. They've amassed so many top picks that they should be a super team, but. I just still think the, the common denominator in all of it is having a player that can transcend that really is the matchup problem. No matter what happens, LeBron is the only player that we've seen in, in modern NBA that can go to a team that was terrible and take that make that team a contender. Kyrie is not that type of player. No matter how good he is, Kyrie is not a guy that you put on a team and say, you know what? All of a sudden we're gonna go to the we have a good chance to go to finals. We could put LeBron anywhere. And you're already, and I guarantee you, not only that fan base, but the media will start saying, you know what? I see that guy being able to take this team far in the playoffs. But see, see, I disagree. I think Kyrie is that guy. I think he is that guy who can who can lead a team. Now, people may say, well, he didn't do it before LeBron got there, but I mean, he had nothing else. I mean, like you look at the teams that if if he wants to go to, he has help. Well, other than the Knicks, if he if he goes to the Knicks, then he's done. But these other teams, he has help to to lead to lead these teams, like. Especially Kyrie, the way he plays, he's a scorer. There aren't many point guards like Kyrie. But see, that's that the difference, though. Like the, problem, the thing is, he's a point guard. The point guard, by his definition in the NBA's job, is not to score. What makes me say Derek Fisher is the GOAT isn't because Derek Fisher put up points. Derek Fisher was a 10-point, 10, 10, 15-point guy. Derek Fisher's job was to distribute and, and make sure the offense is good. When LeVar Ball, when they're talking about how good he's going to be in L.A., it's not because he had – yes, you can have the 30-point games, you can have the 40-point games, but your job is to be a 10-10 and 5 guy. 10 points, 10 assists, 5 steals, 5 rebounds, whatever it is you need to get. If you can get a triple-double in that, that's what the point guard's job is to do. When you look at the teams where the point guard just scores, when you look at OKC, they're good to a point. And then what happens is the, the teams that actually – have a true point guard that can defend. Even with the Spurs, when you think about when the Spurs were good, what Tony Parker was able to do, Tony Parker was a true point guard. He can distribute the ball. He can score when he needs to, but his job is to make sure the offense runs. And, yes, what we do as fans, we get excited about points, 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 but it's still a team team game. I agree. That, I mean, Kyrie's not really known for passing the ball that much. It's interesting that he wants to go to team be the focal point I mean, what else do you want? You get to play with LeBron. You, he already doesn't even pass it that much to LeBron anyways. But he, he, I guess he wants to be the star. He wants to have his own thing. And that's where you – and to be honest with you, that's where I respect it. Like, people always joke. I mean, go get paid. Go get paid, young man. Because you don't, you don't have much, but so much left on your contract anyway when they trade you. Go find somewhere that you're going to get the most money. He's got his ring. Yeah, because look at what the Wizards just paid John Wall. He just got $170 million in four years and it, and on an extension. I mean, Kyrie or John Wall, who you want. But John Wall just got paid. I'm sure Kyrie's looking at that thinking, I want to get paid too. Right. He's not so, KD. And that's the yeah. difference. KD is the type of guy who can take a pay cut but see where the potential money is in the, in, in the long run, being a part of a team concept. In the, but, again, I can't knock a guy who's trying to get his bread. Go get your bread. I wish more people would actually, to be honest with you, be selfish. I mean, that. That's all I can say. I mean, until you get to a position, actually, somebody brought up on the text line five seven one. It's good. It's Kyrie is stupid, leaving a winner. He's doing what Kobe did to Shaq. The only difference is Kobe eventually did get back around to getting to the championship. But when they were together, when it was well, Kobe ran Shaq out. It was a little bit different. But if they would have been able to keep that together, the Laker dynasty might have been able to win a couple more championships. But wanted to be the marquee guy. And it doesn't matter. You're not going to be the marquee guy as long as LeBron James is in Ohio, especially yeah. as long as LeBron James is in Ohio. You could forget about that. Heck, it's also probably put a little dent in his Uncle Drew brand. When that yeah. Uncle Drew commercial first came out, it was hot. It was viral. I haven't really seen – I mean, I see it on social media. I know they made like two more, but it ain't as good as it as it was in the beginning. I mean, it will be interesting. I mean, I wonder what, how his teammates react. I'm looking at a tweet here from Kevin Love. Yesterday at 5.53, he says, life is amazing, no complaints. Things are a little peculiar, but no complaints. Now go kick some rocks. Now, 5.53, that was maybe 
a couple minutes after the rumor came out about Kyrie Irving wanting to opt out. So it's, it's Kevin Love saying, hey, bye. I mean, you got to do what you got to mm-hmm. do. That's his bit. I mean, it is business. So, I mean, but at the end of the day, it's still a bronze team. And unfortunately, LeBron is going to have to own up to some of these mistakes. When you think about it, Kyrie did not choose LeBron. LeBron chose Kyrie, and he may feel some type of way about that. And that could be part of it as well. So, I don't know. This is way this is way too much to talk about basketball. Uh, we got to get into we got to get into something. We, we got to get into something else. So this might be a little bit early. We, we'll go a little bit longer on the next on the next segment. But again, I'm not 100 percent sure how I feel about this. But it doesn't matter where Kyrie goes. The only player I follow in the NBA is LeBron James. So LeBron we are, James. we are a team LeBron James in the Coleman household. With that, we're gonna take this break. We'll come back on the other side and let's talk about tickets and the and when ABC and chilling goes wrong. We'll be right back. Try that tease right there. <laughs> this break's gonna be a little longer because we got that championship update. Oh, okay. See, he, he agreed. Minnesota could be scary with Uncle Drew. It could be what? Scary. And I, I agree. That's, that's an ugly and nasty team. Golden State's problem is they, well, I guess it wasn't really a problem because they covered it up, but they didn't have a big man who could score or, or a big man that could really stop anything. And that's what the Timberwolves have. They have two. If you look at it like this, if Kyrie Irving and Steph Curry cancel each other out, Jimmy Butler and Clay Thompson cancel each other out, well, Jimmy Butler may score more. Jimmy, Jimmy Butler is also a good defender, too. Jimmy Butler, nice. Bro. They they may cancel each other out. Now, Minnes- Andrew Wiggins and Kevin Durant, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. They won't cancel each other out, but that'll be fun. And then power forward and center, I mean, Timberwolves have that. Carl Anthony Towns. At center, who I don't even know who their power forward is, whoever their power forward is. But it's better than what Golden, Golden State's rocking out there at the four and the five. Then he'll be proud. <laughs> Danny, you won't believe what I did, man. It's crazy how we got this. Y'all can't see this, but this Facebook Live we got going on, okay? Go, going through some things with this phone. Though. We got it on two magazines, a tip of a hat, some paper, on top of a computer. Just, it's a lot going on. I had to sacrifice my gator hat. Yeah, this, at least he's been doing something. I'm like, every damn by no gator hat. Okay, <clears throat> in case y'all didn't notice, Pete the socks, in case y'all didn't notice. Yeah, you look like your grandmother knitted them socks. <laughs> I don't even know how to sock. Well, let's see if I can date myself. I wore the socks in middle school. That's how long it has. You know what's crazy? I had some Florida State ones too, just like them. That's good, man. But I that gave it to my mom because she's not a sports fan. That's good. That was good. That was when you were making sense. <laughs> Bought them from the same store. They were actually touching each other, which I thought was a disgrace. It's kind of weird. Touching yeah. each other. The devalue to get down um, Florida State songs. <laughs> they, they, they had some awesome Georgia ones and all that other BS. But. Sock. <laughs> I don't hate on my socks. Somebody said my socks. Are Shout out to my man Key Larson for my shirt. Famous James Crab Shack. Uh. <laughs> Eat them like you stole them. So good. Make it look still.
Man, this dude, Aaron Judge for the Yankees. Oh, yeah, he's gonna be crazy. That's what I'm Seen that homer he had yesterday? Mm-hmm. I mean, the dude, you know, like the stat cast that MLB has? He hit it so far, it broke the stat cast. Like, it broke it. Like, the numbers just kept going and going and going. Angelo Smith at Seminole Nation. That'd be interesting though, see where he goes if he does get traded. I saw a meme with um the, the NBA two K colors. It's like like a curse, like the past like three out of four years. LeBron was on the cover with the Heat, he went to the Cavs the next year. Oh, that's funny. The who was uh, uh Durant was on the cover, he went to the Warriors. Paul George is on the cover, <laughs> he left. Yeah, Kyrie is on this one. If he gets traded, he'll be the next one. Solo Dolo, again for David Dupree. Shout out to 718 Apparel for the gear. Not for this shirt, but for our sports day gear. What you about to talk about? We're going to talk about Dante. Sports Den on 1010XL 92.5 FM. This is the Sports Den brought to you by ABC Fine Wine and Spirits inside the Thin MD Med Spa Studios. Matter of fact, it's a perfect day right now to go get you a little ABC and chill. What you do is go in there, get you a little bit of money, pull out that um that plastic card that you have with the numbers on it and the security code in the back. And you go in there and you go pick you up some Remy or some Hardy's, get you some scotch, get you something like that, go over there into the humidor. Get you a really nice cigar and go just chill out on your back porch and listen to the sports then. Or if you're already ABC and the chilling, go call Shipped S H I P T or hit up that app and they'll come then tell them what you want. They'll deliver it to you so you don't even have to leave. You can be as lazy as possible. One of the situations that just happened and um we'll, we'll get into it is it is and I'm going to read into it. One of Dante's Fowler's people reached out to me. This is all embellishment, by the way. So I'm just going to let you know this. So. Don't go around and take this as hard fact. This is just what I believe happened. Um, they came in. They told me, James, big game. I just want to let you let you know why this really happened. Dante was spe- was coming into the neighborhood, and the guy yelled at him and told him that ABC Fine Wine Spirits isn't any good. And Dante just parked the car, and he got out of the car and said, "Hey, I bet you won't say that to my face. My boys at the sports den they they mess with ABC. That's they they roll with ABC." And then he looked in the bag. And he saw us from no, some no-name um, establishment. So he took it. He, he knocked the guy's glasses off the top of his head. And he chunked the man's alcohol into the river because he didn't buy it at ABC Fine Wine and Spirits. So we, I like that kind of loyalty. But let's talk about Dante Fowler and, and how people have blown. I mean, they are – like, Jags fans are interesting, man. People fans are interesting in, in general. Like, they want to cut this man not because – 
he he stole he he punched a fifty five year old male in in the face and and nothing happened to him besides the sunglasses getting knocked off his head, but because but because he did that like to me if I'm gonna be upset, I don't want my all my NFL defensive end my top three draft pick to hit somebody and it doesn't leave a bruise on him like because if that's happening that means the left tackle on the other team is gonna eat them shots and and we ain't gonna get no pass rush again and that's one of the problems that we have I want my defense I need my defensive players to actually have some kind of aggression and actually knock people out. Like, you want to know what I want to see? We talked about we talked about Zeke on Monday. I saw the pictures of what Zeke did to that man. I need my defensive ends to hit people like running backs for the Cowboys. If that's what you're going to be, that's what I'm more upset about. But in the grand scheme of things, if it ain't – like, we had a theory in the neighborhood I grew up in. If it ain't a 10K bond, $10,000 bond, it ain't no real trouble. Like it just—I mean, my man paid six hundred something dollars. He had that in his pocket. Like that ain't no real trouble, baby. What do you, what, what's your thoughts on this Dante situation? What are, they, what, what are you hearing, man? This oh, <laughs> this man right here. Okay, first of all, he 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 got mad. The man said something about him driving. I mean, whatever. You could have just kept going, Dante. That's all you had to do. But you got mad because maybe he said you was driving too fast. You was driving too erratic. Who knows? But you go and knock the man's glasses off. He don't forget now. He ain't just knock them off. He stepped on them. Yeah, he stepped he on. He stepped him on. Too. He nice. broke the man's glasses. You know, it's probably ten dollar glasses. Yeah, he didn't get another show, pair. Show a little bit of aggressiveness. He he had to step on them. But the thing I see people frustrated about the most, or laughing at the most, is that the fact that he threw the man's liquor into the lake. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I this, mean, so life's this, too short. I know you're not twenty one yet. Yeah. So you don't. You can't appreciate. You well. You shouldn't appreciate this yet. But it's probably was ripple. Or some cheap liquor, and life is way too short to drink cheap liquor. I mean, Dante Fowler's a multimillionaire. He probably gave him a couple of dollars. That, hey, step your game up, man. Go get some, uh, put some respect on your alcohol. That's pretty much what he told him. I think, I think, well, I think what he messed up is that he, according to a report, he left, and the police talked to him when he came back. Like Dante, you shouldn't have came back, bro. You should have just left. Well, he probably he might have got a call. Like yes. that, that he might have got a call, and somebody probably would have told him to come back, but. I mean, that, bigger than this, what happens is anytime an athlete gets into trouble, um, people want to see a pattern, which is smart. I mean, and I understand that's respectable. You want to see a pattern of things and where, where I have an issue. And this is, yes, this is going to be one of the only times you ever see me as, as James. Actually, I defend right. Right is right and wrong is wrong. I'm going to defend Dante Fowler on this situation because people say he keeps getting in trouble. He keeps getting in trouble. And I always have to say, well, what is the, the keep? getting in trouble part. And they brought up something that nobody knew about until this time. So fan that – this is what bothers me too. Fan that thinks they know everything, don't bring up the case that happened in December because nobody knew about it in December. Like you didn't know any – because if you knew about it, you would have brought it up. It would have made headline, really big headlines. It, was, it must have been a busy media day because typically that kind of – just like this really slow media day thing popped up, it would have blown up then because he actually did punch an EMT. Or a cop, it just one or one of those two things, but it didn't. It got thrown out, or something happened. It, it didn't. It didn't make that big of a deal. But you didn't know about that, so you can't do that. So what happens is we go to things that are so simple and mundane that we feel like we just have to bring it up. The ticket situation, the ten tickets. You can get ten tickets in East Hampton right now, bro. Like just through the door out the. Co- oh my god! Wow. Hello. Jeez. What is this? Don't ask about him. What about you? Hello. We got to pause on this Dante Fowler to talk about GQ Man of the Year. So um, at Denny underscore, underscore Thompson. For those who are not on Facebook Live, I have never, ever in my life seen Denny Thompson uh-huh. in any kind of shirt that is long sleeve besides a, besides a, um, a, work, a workout shirt. Is that true? I don't even think you wore that at, um, at Malik's event. Yeah, I did. You wore a long sleeve, but you didn't wear no tie. Uh-uh. Then he's yeah. got a tie on. I didn't even know he owned slacks. And the shoes ain't even the shoes and the belt kind of match. Bro. The only problem I remember. have the only problem I have right now is your Samsung watch. Because it's black. That, yeah, that's throwing me get off. Over that. That's throwing me get off right that. now. You gotta remember though, I did this for I dressed this way every day. For I thought 10 you years, like bro. I thought you like rebelled and like just like no, I grew like out of spo- everything. Went like a spoiled child and just burned everything. No, I grew out away. of everything. I just got fat, and then Capasso got me back in everything. Jeez, man, you look sharp, man. I you need to dress it. like this. Like, nah. go frangy on this. Come nah. to work. Come to the radio station somebody's dressed gotta, up like this. Somebody, unfortunately, somebody's got to pass away for me to dress like this. Oh, man. I don't even dress like this if somebody gets married. Oh, man. You look sharp, man. I can oh, see I why Angie that. was what, so what is, excited. What, what's going on here? 
It was I was tired of talking to myself. What's up, man? So well, I just threw him out. I, I just I threw him over. There. I just I, threw him I, over. I had there. to hold down the fort. I just threw him over there to see what he could do. He actually didn't do bad. He knows basketball. What are we talking about? Down. Right now we're talking about Dante Fowler. What's the big deal? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, like are we gonna are we gonna sit around and act like Dante's not what is he, twenty three? Yeah, too. Well, no, 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 no. It doesn't matter that he's 22, 23. You know why? Because he's a multimillionaire. Money should make you mature all of a sudden. Yeah, okay. Because there's not a bunch of multimillionaire 23-year-olds that aren't in the NFL making something? immature decisions. Okay, Let, tell me if I'm wrong, but I may be missing something. So he was driving through some neighborhood, yeah. right? And some dude called him out for driving too fast. Yep. And he got out the car and dude realized I shouldn't have called him out. It was a big brother. Happens a lot to me. Right? And so... Dude probably backpedaled a little bit, and Dante gave him a little slap. Didn't even close fist him, did he? Nah. I mean, it couldn't have been. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. I, I, it I couldn't have been this. that hard. I'll say this: the part that that I look at Dante, and if I had him in here right now today, I'd look at him and go, "See where you went wrong? You stepped on the glasses, dog. That's petty. Like, yeah. like if if you if if you're gonna go that way, might as well punch him. Yeah, just punch him. Don't worry about the glasses. The liquor's a bad look. Don't throw the man's liquor. Like, but but no, you know he, what? I told you why. I know why he. These people called me and they told me why he threw the liquor. Oh, he was I, mad because they didn't buy it from ABC. Yeah, he didn't buy yeah. it from ABC. It's Wait, not any good. Here's the thing. So, I try to look at everything whenever I read this. Is like, what would I do? Right. Right. Okay. If you're speeding through my neighborhood and I'm, my kids are outside playing, I'm probably gonna give you the little look. Like, come on, dog. Right. Hmm. I, I've got to understand when I give you that look, there's a chance you're going to get out. True. Okay? Th- i got to understand that. It's no different than if I'm driving down the road and you pull in front of me and flip me the bird, there's a chance I'm going to get out. It ain't smart, but there's a chance. And you got to recognize that so when you decide you're doing, to do it. What you're doing is putting some of the onus on the guy who's, yes. 55, who's 55 years old yes. who should be grown up by this point and should know that you shouldn't challenge. You shouldn't throw out challenges like yes. that. Yes, and I'm not giving Dante a free pass, but my God, I mean, this, he didn't go punch a DJ. He, it, 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 he didn't just walk up and break some dude's nose. Speaking of Dante that, gave him a little thump on the head. Speaking of that, I He was didn't proud. call an escort service. Shout out to Ezekiel Elliott, man. Shout out to the running back set. Dude, shout, shout out to the running Zeke's backs. high maintenance now. But no, what I'm saying is, you see, I want that's well, what the, I want my defensive. End, what I want my defensive ends to punch like is what the Cowboy running backs. Right, he punch lit him like. up. He lit him. Did you see a speeding ticket? A oh, Zeke got a speeding ticket. Hundred miles an hour. Well, I mean, Zeke's. I mean, Zeke's, just like I, no, Zeke's on his way to being a thirty for thirty. Just like I said, the, when I get a speed, is David Banner, the rapper David Banner came out. Police officer pulled him over in his Porsche. He said, "Sir." You're going 100 miles per hour. Why are you going so fast? He said, officer, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm only doing it because I can afford the consequences. And so, I mean, I get it. I'm not saying yeah, it's right. I'm not no, saying Zeke, it's right. But like, I get Zeke's it. headed towards 30 for 30 status, man. Like, he's headed towards he could have been something really special, and he just can't get out of his own way. Here's a, here's a, good, here's a good text. And I like – this is what a lot of people say. Um – from eight six four, for some reason I can't see your the computer laptop you're on as um as well as mine. But absolutely love you guys show. But what what do you mean? What's the big deal? It's called choices and consequences. I face them. You guys face them. Professional athletes face them. There comes a time in our lives when you have to grow up and take on responsibility. Um, right, just like the fifty five year old took on responsibility for yelling but, at him. But, but when people say that, like, what? Where did we absolve him of responsibility? It, and he is taking up responsibility. Right. He had to post. He got arrested. Right. He posted his bond, and he's going to keep it moving. But for when people, where I have a problem is when people are like, "We should cut him. We should cut him for what? Because he got ten tickets in in two well, years. I can't cut. I can't judge anybody for that. Okay. Because I got four tickets. In two months, I coming out of my neighborhood. I'm kind of judging you for that. But that's not my fault. That's the that's you got one in super, Clay County, that's dude. Super Didn't you get one in another state? You got the one in North Carolina. The one that was two years ago. That's why I was in all this trouble. <laughs> but the one for Clay County, I wasn't even speeding. Buddy just saw me, and you know I'm not I'm not gonna get into. It. Buddy saw saw me and he pulled me over. He couldn't even say I was speeding. He just said, "Hey, all I right. noticed that this was happening." So but, that's but the only this, reason. Okay, so that text right there, I get what you're saying, but I, but let, let me just challenge people to think about this. We always get the, in my job, there's consequences, right? Right. Okay. He's got the same consequences you got times a million. Like In your job, if you go punch somebody, we never hear about it. You we, don't. We don't hear about it. Dante out of 10, Fowler, we haven't talked about him all year until he punched somebody. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to get fired. And nobody's going to say you should get fired for some of the things that he's done. So what I say is don't talk about 
you face consequences, we face consequences. Because I don't face those kind of consequences. No. Like, that's not my job. Um, if I get pulled over, nobody knows it as long as I make sure I take over, take care of my responsibilities. If and same thing you with lose most clients, people. I lose clients. Like, if we go and we do something and we would make the news, right, we would lose clients. That's, right. that's, the, that's consequence. the consequence. Yeah. Whatever legal consequence, Dante already had to face it and will have to face it. It's probably a court date coming. I don't know. And he probably will. And who knows? Roger Goodell likes to over overstep his boundaries, so he'll probably come in and, yeah. and suspend, slap a suspension on him or but something I, like that. I understand but. what the text are saying. I'm just – like I hear that a lot. I, I think of that more along the lines of – I think of that a lot of times with drugs. Like I do think a lot of times with drugs when people say, well, it's just weed or it's just this or it's just that. There's a lot of people out there painting houses today that have to do a drug test. If they flunk it, they're fired. Well, that's true. You know, so, I mean, I, I do see it in that. But it, this is a hot-headed 23-year-old. I guess a hot-headed 55, 55 Yeah, a 55-year-old decided to challenge you. That was probably inebriated or in his way to get inebriated, which probably would alcohol always makes things. A if, I more mean, I got I got a lot more questions for Dante than why'd you get out the car? Is my point. Right. I, I mean, there, there's a lot more questions like when are you gonna get to the quarterback. Like, there's a lot more job related questions. Yeah, if you want to cut them, cut them. Yeah. I mean, that's the <laughs> that, I, I get that part, but like, don't say that this is the reason why you should throw. Because the other part of it is your 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 thoughts are irrational because. He's going to get paid still. So we might as well try to get something out of now, it. Now, now, maybe when it's now, time for contract renegotiation, you use this kind of thing. I will say this. Dante, you're an idiot. I will say that. Now, that don't mean you should be cut, but you do have to realize the platform that you're on. And and you are, you know, you're rolling through this neighborhood. And what is Dante? 6'3", 2, what? 60. 265, something like, like that. Yeah. that. Right. I, I mean, Dante, would you have done the same thing if you were 5'8", 180? Like, like uh, that's the question that I have because because when you line up against six six three forty, they stone you every Sunday. That's a, good, that's a good point, but that's the other side of it. Is again, that's what my problem. What people say, you really have to realize you're a target. Well, we need to start holding other people accountable too. Because yeah. one, two things: the guy who's fifty five, I'm I'm assuming isn't NFL caliber or NFL size. You never know, man. You never know. That's one thing. But number two, if Dante was five, was five eight one eighty, would the police have been called? If the same situation happened, oh, I pro- doubt probably not. I probably got his butt kicked getting out the car. Might have, but I'm just probably saying. Probably wouldn't have got out the car. So, those are the things. But, anyways, Dante was, was stupid. Um, well, let me be but real. It if I'm driving and you and, and, and somebody, I, see, I can see somebody, how big they are is a direct correlation to how mad they make me. I, 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 let's just be so, honest. So, they're small, you're, you're super angry. But as I they could keep, be. As but, they keep walking, to, walking towards you, they're the size of Brandon Albert. Yeah, I'm probably I'm probably gonna be like, you know what, dude, I should slow down. You're right. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate that. There are kids in the neighborhood. Thanks for looking out, dog. I, I mean, I'm just being honest about it. I'm not. I mean, I'm not mad at Dante. There's bigger fish to fry, and there's other issues. There's guys who have been in who have gotten into some real trouble. But on that note, we got to take a break. And we're speaking to people who are in bigger trouble who are getting off. Um, let's talk about Juice. Can we, dude? We got so much to talk about today. Have y'all talked about Hugh Freeze at all? No, that's the big one. That might take a couple seconds. Yeah, so we're trying I to get this. Wait. We're trying to get some I, of this stuff I, out the way, man. I have been just drooling. I know because you love. You're a big Hugh Freeze. Oh, fan. I hate Hugh. You want to talk about Hugh Freeze? And I've hated Hugh Freeze since he took the job at you Ole want, Miss. You want to so. talk about Hugh Freeze next? I don't. I don't care. We got a lot. We got. This, a lot. Okay, we'll we'll escort, we'll we'll escort out of this break, and we'll bring up Hugh Freeze right <laughs> right right after the next right. Come when we come back for the next segment. We'll be right back. You take this, I hate this question. It's the reason why I sit. Okay, please with you. You gotta work on your voice, that's It's the only thing you gotta work on. Dude, don't talk to me about voice. When you come from a black funeral, those preachers, man, have the best damn voices. <laughs> yeah. No, just all of them were like, I mean, how do they do that? Hey, do me a favor, though. Do me a favor. And I wanted to post this on Facebook so bad. I don't want people to get the wrong impression. Yeah. If I die, don't put me in them damn angel wings on no flyer, man. Like that stuff. Like I don't want that, man. I don't want to be in no clouds. I want yeah. to be in a normal situation that you would, that you would see me in. And post the skinny pictures of me. Don't post the big pictures of me. <laughs> hey, if I die, I want I want McKissick Jr. doing it. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Good to see you, man. You too. Oh, you too. Welcome. How you doing? I'm good. Yeah. Good. Your wife said you look hot, by the way. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man. 
held it down, man. I was about to say something funny on the head. I was like, nah, let me. I said, I was about to say, you look like Jim Michael Wayne. Come in a minute. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Craig said, you looking sharp. Ooh, Craig. Yeah, we, um, we talked on um, Kyrie Irving trade requests. Yeah, and then the, the segment that you walked in on. That was it. He, James has to come go up and uh, the topics. Timothy said he wished he had something to drink. Over here. I guess he saw you drink. Somebody's like, they wanted something to drink. That's all they just drink. I ain't drinking like that. No, that's Tim. Tim actually yeah. wants, wants some real drink. Hey, Danny, what's your number? I got to rebuild my contacts list. Actually, I may need to do the same thing. Mine is 904 960. Oh, okay. Just just text him. Oh, oh. Did he? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, so I, I'm waiting on it. Somebody going to be on the nine oh four. Yeah. Oh, let's try to see if we can fix the way. Text me something. Yeah, man. My voice. Text him. Yeah. I mean, nobody takes a really good mugshot picture, but like, his are consistently bad. Like, you gotta step his mugshot grandma. Yeah, but there you go. Flagship station of the Jacksonville Jaguars. WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. What the Attention doing yourself part What's happening, guys? Hey, man, what's your name? I'm Robert. Andrew. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Danny, what's happening, man? How are you? Good to see you. So, something this morning happened to me that hasn't happened ever. So, I'm sitting in the drive through at Duncan. Wait a minute. She lets you know you're on Facebook Live. So, all right. Is that embarrassing? No. Okay, I mean, actually, that's bad. Mixed sitting in the drive through at Duncan, uh, just getting a coffee, getting ready for the show this morning, and uh, go to the drive through window, and the girl says, Oh, the person in front of you got your, got your stuff. You paid for my stuff. And it was a really good looking Florida State girl. Like, she had a tag that said an old girl on, the, on her car. Oh, you don't know and no. wearing like a pink hat and a blonde girl. It's probably and I was a like, tattoo on her, on her backside. And I was like, all right. I said, what did she say? And she said, oh, I got this. 
Did you pay it for it? Like, I didn't know what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Being on some chips, we go zero to a hundred real quick. Maybe you on that rap to pay the bill. And now I'm finished, not even a little bill. 1010 XL, 92.5 FM. Join us in the sports den. Call or text 641 1010. This is the Sports Den, brought to you by ABC Fine Wine Experience inside of Thin MD Basketball Studios. We finally have at Denny underscore Thompson here, um, hanging out with, at Big Game James three six. Yeah, act like I was gone for two weeks. Well, I mean, you were gone for two six, which is practically no three, two and a half, two and a half, which is practically um that long. Yeah, but now nah, you came back, man. You look good, man. I just want to appreciate you know, it. You should appreciate it. You got a haircut too? I cut my own hair. Okay. This was about a week and a half ago. Okay. Yeah. I just always wear a hat. Hey, um, real quick on the Duval Ford text line, um, 307. It says, how about this? Someone older than you tells you to stop speaking in the neighborhood. You say, sorry, sir. 307, no. you, hold on. You're, 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 you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. You should say that. You're right. You're, you should. You should. You shouldn't be speeding in a neighborhood. But you, all I'm saying in this scenario is there's things a lot worse going on then somebody getting out and essentially thumping some dude's glasses off of his head. Yeah. I mean, it, so so I just I just want people to understand that you are filing into a state into a stadium that's that seats 67, 68,000 people to watch people as hard as they possibly can hit other grown men. You're you're watching gladiators. Go at it. You you're you're buying tickets to a sport that I love too, knowing that it causes long-term mental health issues yeah and now you want to get angry when said dude gets out and confronts a guy so like, pretty much that's what he's trying to do and you want to get mad because he's right. he trying to do I, I this is what i have no here's what i have to say and yes you should you should respect everybody not just your elders you should respect authority and things like that but like dude just because of just because you're 25 you're, you're 30 years older than me doesn't give you a right to be a jerk Mm-hmm. And I should listen to you because you're a jerk because you're older than me. No, I have a dad and I got a mom. I don't listen to either what, the, what both of them say consistently. So what the hell makes you think I'm gonna listen to some person that I don't even know? Uh, so I mean, so let's put that to bed. A six four makes a very good point. What's that? He said he knows that you're used to being an FSU fan and that type of stuff happens on a regular basis. When you look at it from an FSU standpoint, yes, it probably isn't a big deal, especially after all the junk they let slide under the rug. Time out. You can't be a fan of UM or UF and even be able to hold that. We don't have killers on payroll. We don't have – I mean, it's, let's just calm down. Hey, you got guys that steal hot dogs at Florida and run – or tacos, tacos. excuse me. Tacos and dogs. run off. Come on now. So let's just it's calm, Taco Tuesday, yeah, man. Let's just, let's just calm down on those <laughs> things right there. And, they, and, again, this guy's a Florida grad. So, I mean, apparently, you know, hey, it is what it is. Well, speaking of getting away with anything, uh, let's talk about Hugh Freeze. So, Hugh Freeze – forced to resign essentially um i don't know how far into the pettiness of houston nut you've read into this no houston nut has been getting after it houston nut is the one that alerted the school to the phone call how does he houston know? nuts attorney um because houston nut is involved right now in a lawsuit essentially um based it's a long story but it, but in, but in, to make it simple Houston Nuts attorney said, basically, you're going to do what we want you to do or we're going to release this this public call information. Hugh Freeze made this call from a public phone. Yeah, that's so, why I, 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 I figure that's the only way they can get the information. Yeah. If it was from his Ole Miss issued phone, which is state property. Which so, is why I'm like, if you're a multimillionaire, dude, it's $60. Like, you, you can get a $60 a month plan. Hey, you can get Metro PCS for cheaper than that, bro. Like, get you a burner. Yeah, I, I, I uh, Houston Nuts attorney has now jumped to the top of the list of people if I ever need an attorney that I'll call. Um, yeah, read into that. You'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. But th- here's what I want to say about this is Hugh Freeze did not get fired because he made a phone call. Okay, so let's let's stop yeah. that dialogue right now. Hugh Freeze got fired because he's a tool and a turd involved in so many bad things that he's covered up in the name of – I God. won't even go there. Yeah. That that finally Ole Miss looked at this and said, "Oh wait, 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 wait. Here's here's a way we can get out of our our uh, contract." So it, it's not even stop with the oh he, he you know 
things have guys have done things worse. No, they haven't. You don't know what Ole Miss knows. Ole Miss's president even said the same thing. Ole Miss's president said that we're choosing not to release all of the public records. If we did, you would understand why we're having to do this. Okay, Hugh Freeze has been a, a fraud since he got to Ole Miss. Dude, I just read this part on the article. <laughs> what, Houston Nut? Dude, it, 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 wasn't the, it wasn't that one call. There's 39,000 other calls that are questionable. Yeah, th- I mean, <laughs> good, good night. Th- when like, did he coach? Bro, you, have a, like, you got an issue. You got a problem, man. There, I, my prediction is as the months go by, we're going to hear things that's going to make your mouth drop about what Hugh Freeze and Ole Miss did. We're going to hear things that you're going to go, you got to be. It's going to make Louisville seem like vacation Bible school. True. All right. I mean, when you have guys coming out of the draft dropping little nuggets, and by the way, all of our shows are on SoundCloud, right? So you can go back and you can listen to what I said then. And if you remember, a prominent member in Jacksonville got on to me on Twitter for saying it then about how he knows Hugh Freeze and Hugh Freeze is a great guy. And I just, I'm gonna stand up for anybody. I don't care if I don't care if you're a deacon at my church. Like if I don't know you, know you like that. I'm not. I always put it like this: anything is possible. Like that, even with you, like if somebody was like, "Hey, Denny, do this," I said, "I would like." I think the best of them. I know the best of them. Anything is possible. Anything. That's possible. what I'm. That's Especially just what I want to say. Anything is possible. I'm not going to put my reputation on the line just to back somebody like that doesn't and it doesn't benefit me. Like nobody, this guy doesn't know no, you freeze like that, man. I, I just okay. L- let me break it down this way, James. Everybody cheats, mm-hmm. All right? At every single college, and he's in America at every level. Oh, you meant like football wise? Yes. Okay, my bad. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> no, what? That's a whole other subject. Everybody cheats in college football. You have to be so egregious to get caught the way that he's gotten caught over and over and over again. I actually, on my phone, I'll find it. I'll actually tweet it out because I remember when he texted it or when he, he tweeted, tweeted it. About and, how he's how clean his program is. Yes, and, things, yeah. and I, I literally screenshotted it that day yeah. because I remember going, I, I need, I'm gonna, there's going to come a time I need to have this. Right. Like, I mean, the fact that you've got guys – willingly admitting to what was it thirty thousand dollar payments or whatever mm-hmm. it was and then other guys getting drafted and and then immediately ratting you out and thing after thing after thing after thing only lets you know that there's probably a hundred more that haven't said anything right and if you didn't realize that going on or go, at the very beginning then you're kind of naive the other thing the worst situation goes to Ole Miss now stop with the Lane Kiffin stuff stop with the Chip Kelly stuff Ole Miss has to do what Baylor did. Ole Miss now has to go hire some dude with a perfect resume who probably isn't a great coach. There's no way they can hire anybody with any NCAA infraction history. Yeah, you got to hire – yeah, because um, Baylor did wait – how they wait for his coach. Yeah. Who was – Who had been out of the game for two years. Yeah. Jim Grove. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to do something like that. You've got to go find some dude who is starch clean. You got to find Tony Dungy. You do. Is he still coach? Is you he, do. Is he available to coach? You, so, Chip Kelly's not going to Ole Miss. Y'all can stop no. that. That's an Ole Miss fan dreaming. Same Ole Miss fans who said all along, leave our coach alone. He's a good dude. Okay. He probably he may he could still qualify for a good dude. I'm not saying this disqualifies you as a good guy. It just disqualifies you as an honest guy. Well, I'm saying I, I, don't, I don't think he is a good guy. Yeah, he doesn't now, seem to like me, it. To me, if he tells me when all this stuff. When I see Art Browse, that's a bad guy. This is this is a guy who made some stupid decisions consistently, but then backed it up. But but through, but the reason why I say it, he he doesn't help people who who stand by their principles. Like they're I'm I'm a Christian. I do this. Blah blah blah. You know I wouldn't do this because I'm a Christian. Well, yeah. Houston nut, not Houston nut. <laughs> Art Browse. Hugh Freeze oh. says that he's super. He's a super Christian. Art, and, and Art Browse was at a Baptist college. Yeah, well, that's even worse. So I mean, I'm just that's the problem. That's why I say, no, nah, I don't. These guys make it hard for for other people. They do, they do. I, I feel bad for Ole Miss fan because Ole Miss has been stuck in mediocrity forever. We we looked at it one time. Remember the the consecutive years without a bowl game, and we mm-hmm. were kind of surprised. Actually, they're going to be stuck in that way again. What if I told you? 
that that high pain boosters, escorts, bong grips, <laughs> and high high rating recruiting classes could not even win you your division, or even sniff a national championship. <laughs> and what if I told you that a one minute misdial could ruin your whole <laughs> career? Misdial. The ESPN thirty for thirty hips, lips, and fingertips. <laughs> Hags, cash, and scallywags. The story of Ole Miss football. <laughs> hey, if that was a missed out, he was the unluckiest person in the world. He did it 39,000 times. He did it 39,000 times and never figured it out. <laughs> no, there's no way you call anybody 39,000 times. That, I mean, I don't know if it was the same lady. Off I think of there was 39,000 calls. There's yeah, no yeah, it was, way. It was calls. It was just like it, they like, went through all of the calls and There's not 39,000 questions. It might not have just been 30. You know, what, what, what it might have been, because I'm sure he's made more than that because he's a coach. He has to. I'm sure, but if we look into that, we'll probably see escorts, NCAA violations because he called um, improperly during different times and other stuff. Actually, not, actually um, Dom brings up a good point, but it won't ever happen for the reasons I believe. Charlie Strong is not – there won't be a coach like Charlie Strong in the SEC. He's no. not black? No, 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 no. No, there'll be another black coach in the SEC. But there's not going to be a black coach with a white wife in the SEC. Be a black coach with a black wife. White coach with a black wife, maybe. But it won't be the other way around. Not in, the, not in that part of the SEC. Maybe Florida, Georgia, maybe a little bit. I don't know. We're, we're moved past a lot of stuff. But there's some strong things that people are still against that a little bit. Just got a listener like that, that uh, called in and wanted to remind us all that Les Miles is available. Yeah. He's probably over Les Miles. <laughs> I yeah. did see actually somebody put that. Somebody said Les Miles got a text from Ole Miss AD. Hey, big head, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? Um, I remember a couple weeks ago we talked about this. A couple weeks ago, I, I don't remember who it was. So I think it was Dom actually to ask us on the text on who's the first SEC coach to get fired. Well, there you go. I was actually he was one of the ones that I thought was going to get fired anyway. I just didn't know. Or if you remember the conversation, we started talking about everybody, and then I said, "Well, wait, no, but we're missing the obvious one." And Hugh Freeze. Um, I'm just I, I'm like reading, I'm catching up on all this stuff, and there was a failure of character standards clause in his contract. So, I, I mean, there you go. The minute they were looking for something, somebody may have taken his phone and called it for him. Like I mean, they were looking for something to get rid of. This, this is dude. more of a this cumul- is the blind side, dude, right? Yeah, Hugh Freeze was the head coach at the high school in the blind side. Oh, at the high school, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is accumulation. Like it's not he's not fired because of the one call to an escort service. It was all the other stuff, and no. then the escort service was just like the, the, the cherry, cherry on, on top. top. Yeah, yeah, it's um, amazing. I just love this Houston nut lawyer. It's it's awesome. I appreciate things like this. Like, I appreciate when people just have something they hold back a little bit and then just drop it at the right time. I mean, Houston Nut is just, if you're talking about vengeful, this is, this is vengeful. Houston Nut, if you look at his career earnings, it's insane. It, it, dude was getting paid at one time from Arkansas and Ole Miss an insane amount of money. Like, And he wasn't coaching either one of them. He was still collecting paychecks a lot bigger than Charlie Cheeseburger. A lot bigger, really? than, yes. Yeah, I mean, his his check was, I want to say one year he got like over two mil from each of them. Jeez. And it was that way for a couple of years. I mean, what is he doing now? What is Houston Nutt doing now? How did he know. fall from, I mean, is he even coaching? I don't know. But one of my friends was like, this guy will get on, he said Hugh Freeze will get another job. And I'm like, I'm not sure about that one, man. Yeah. Doesn't say. I, yeah. He's relatively young, too. Who? Houston Nuts. He's 59. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it now, right now. No, he hasn't coached since 2011. Wow. I mean, you go from being a head coach in the SEC to not coaching at all? I mean, his rise was, was pretty unprecedented to me. I mean, you went from Murray State. To Boise State for one season, mm-hmm. to Arkansas. Yeah, like, that's a big jump. Well, he was from Arkansas, so he, I mean, he I mean, was, I got that part. But he was a GA who's, and then he was a receiver coach at Arkansas before he was at Murray State. So, but typically, I would think like you have a. I mean, maybe if he was a, at Boise and had a little bit more success at Boise before he just left to go to Arkansas, that's mm-hmm. what I'm thinking. Like, I mean, 
was one year removed. Man, you look at uh, Arkansas's coaching history lately. Danny Ford was before Houston Nutt. Bobby Petrino was after. And now they got Brett Bielema. Huh. Wow. Well, it's going to be a long couple of months for old Hugh Freeze. You know when? You know what? Um, this is the H- tip of the iceberg. Right Houston's here. brother, Houston Nut's brother's name, Dale. No, Dicky Nut. No, it's not. I'm looking at it right now. Nut's brother, Dicky Nut, was the basketball coach at Arkansas State University. Oh yeah, there's Danny Dicky, and, and now Dennis. he coaches at Florida State. Dicky Nut coaches at Florida Dickie State. Dicky Nut is at Florida State. Can we get him on staff with Jim Bob Cooter? That'd be awesome. But it kind of makes sense though, because if Dicky Nut is anything like Houston. Did it make sense? Now I have an excuse. It's maybe not all Leonard Hamilton's fault. I'm going to have to blame oh, someone. Oh, you said he's basketball. Okay. Yeah, basketball. Yeah. Huh. All right, well, let's take a break. When we come back, we got plenty of other stuff to get into. Like, all kinds of stuff happened between Monday and today. The so, juice is loose, baby. Juice is loose. We'll get into that on the other side as well. You got 8 o'clock coming at 2 o'clock. You got something? We'll find something. All right, we'll be right back. This is the sound of George Kennedy, but he is wrong. For the 10th straight time. That's funny. But after working with our wellness coaches to get back into shape, Lewis never felt so good. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and get your battery tested free of charge. If your battery does need to be replaced, O'Reilly Auto Parts can help you find the exact superstar battery that fits your car or truck at a guaranteed low price. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Before you sell your home, do the math. A $200,000 home sold at a 6% commission will cost you $12,000.
That's it's funny. I bet I bet you did the um, what porn is your state that's most known for you? In the South, is most of it's gay. That's the most Google. This was the biggest um, Friday Night Lights in the history. You want that to be here in Chicago? Yeah, because there's some on every state. I'll just read through it and see if any of you days. I used screenshots on Farm Record. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Is it like the iPhone? Mm -hmm. You see how you screenshot them? Farm Record. Farm Record? That's how. On mine, you always have the volume button to press the power button at the same time. Because like your volume button's on the side. I hold down the bottom, well, the lower volume button, and the power button at the same time. I had to go to the IRS, so I'm not going to call J. David Tax Law, a firm right here in Jacksonville, for affordable IRS tax representation. J. David Tax Law can stop any IRS collection action and protect you from financial devastation. Call J. David Tax Law for a no-cost consultation at 474-5424. That's 904-474-5424. Or visit jdavidtaxlaw.com. Peace of mind is only a click or phone call away. It's love at first sight. Ha ha, what a beauty. Wow. The Florida Roads Fishing Forecast with Captain Kevin Wednesday nights at 7. Brought to you by Rick Power, McClenny Equipment and Tractor <laughs> Sales, <laughs> and Lowell Max on 1010XL. This is the Sports Den on 1010XL 92.5 FM. Hey, your birthday's coming up, right? Four days. Four days? Four days, everybody's going to do to my timeline what I do to there. What? On Facebook, that's when they're like, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Oh. They just hit me that stock happy birthday. I don't ever do that. I don't ever say happy birthday on Facebook. I'm not mad at it. Like, a lot of times, some people get mad. Like, you didn't hit me up on Facebook and tell happy birthday. I called you. Or, like, I called you or I texted you, like, because I actually know you. Like, yeah. You're I, not I my fake friend. Like, I kind of, like, I tell my real friends happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, Pops' birthday was yesterday. Really? Yeah. Pops is a Leo? Look, look at Pops. I don't know. Is that what that means? Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. It's a great day to go by ABC, which I'm sure you've already gotten into. Yeah, we've been talking about it. We told him to go to ship. Oh, okay. And have him deliver it. By the way, I weighed in this week. I'm killing it right now. Good stuff. Yeah. I'm down like 41 pounds. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Then MD Med Spa. Thank you, Dr. Capasso. Um, OJ looks in pretty decent shape. Yeah. He, 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 he don't have to call Capasso when he gets out. Well, I mean, have you heard of the stories that they talk about him in the jail? What's like? He's like the Don in that jail. How? Like, like they just respect, like, he's mediating fights and battles. Like, he's skipping the line in front. Like, everybody's like, letting OJ get his food first. He's, a lot of it just happens to be he has – they know he has money and power. He's teaching them how to how to, how to to win at fantasy football. He's teaching them how to gamble. Like, they're talking about all the things that he's done since he's been in there. I'm like, wow. They, they applauded when the verdict came in, in the jail. They're like, you can hear a roar from the jail. And then when his – um. His attorney walked through. They gave us like a standing ovation to his attorney. Well, then that should prove to everybody that's exactly where he needs to be. That's where he gives the most bang to society is in jail. I think the only reason that he's really pushing out is that putting pushing. I mean, pushing for this is because he was supposed to have like a knee. He has like his knee is like really shot, and he can afford the surgery, but because he's a ward of the state, 
the state has to like, he can only get the minimum requirements. So like I don't care both. They like put him in a um, they like put him in a wheelchair. I, I don't I don't know. I to me, um why are we still hearing about OJ? Like I I mean, what has OJ done that has been Anything good for society in the last 25 years? It's not so much that he's good. It's that he's such a polarizing um, figure. Polarizing? Yes. When you, when you think about what the nation was, I was Does young. anybody think good about O.J. Simpson? Let, let's just get that no, out No, but it's, he's still a guy that's such a villain that when he's on trial, people still pick sides for him. You like want, me, I personally don't care if O.J. ever gets out, but... I was like, cool, juice is out. Doesn't he's matter. Seventy now. Yeah, he's probably gonna make. He's probably gonna have a good reality TV show. He'll probably do some stuff, and I just think the reason why he's in jail right now is so stupid. Well, now, the first time he was in, the first time, everybody knows why he's. Yeah, in yeah, jail but I'm right. saying, and I think that's the only reason why people who have some sympathy have sympathy for him, and the people who don't like him are like, well, he's serving his, he's getting paid for what he got off for back in 94 and I'm like yeah that does, that's not how the system works but you know or supposed to work mm. yeah I, I don't I'm with you I don't care whether he gets out or not uh, I mean it's not like he's moving to Jacksonville I think well, he's moving to Florida oh great he's going to Miami again I think though and it's the reason why yeah it's the, homestead exemption yep the beautiful thing can't touch his pension yeah. while he's here yeah um, I think I'm gonna be honest. With you, I think Jay Z also flung him into Jay Z and the Thirty for Thirty being the most popular Thirty for Thirty that they've had out. Kind of have made him more relevant and explain things to in detail about what's going on. And I think the biggest thing is when Jay Z put out the one line, "I'm not." Well, I mean, it was in the Thirty for Thirty too, but when, and OJ actually believed this is, "I'm not black. I'm OJ," mm-hmm. and that's kind of one of the, he's. One of those athletes like Tiger Woods, like Tiger Woods hasn't won a tournament in a long time, but each time he gets in trouble, we still talk about him. There are guys who are like that who will always be like that. I'm sure when OJ, in 20, 10, 20 years, when OJ dies, it'll be all on ESPN as well. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I guess I was too young to really know OJ's popularity. You know what I mean? I, I, mm-hmm. But. I, I, apparently, this dude was was that dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was like the. I mean, you had Ali, and actually, they were coming up around the same time when you think about it. Ali had a little bit of a head start on him, but you know, still. But they were the first guys to actually like transcend sports. Like OJ, was like the first athlete that was getting like major endorsement deals, like like that. Like I mean, obviously, you could say. Um, other guys did it, but OJ's got got rent a car, got uh, Hertz rent a car. He's got all of these other people, and then he then he transitioned into movies, and then people were like, he's actually, he's like not bad. You where you have on one end, you got Jim Brown, angry black running back, beating up people playing in black exploitation films. You've got OJ in happy films, and he's the guy. And everybody, you know, that's kind of one of those things with in general. Like I guess people like happy demeanors in general. And he was considered a heartthrob, a handsome guy that everybody wanted. Mm. So much so that they joke around and say that he's probably going to be in the Kardashians. I mean, you know, they joke about the kids. <laughs> like That's one of his. I, I kind of do have a problem, though, with uh, with him coming out, getting a reality show and all that kind of stuff. I mean, people will watch it, and I don't have to watch it. So, Well, I mean, the, people, the families that um, Nicole wasn't, Nicole Brown or whatever the guys' names were, they'll get their their cut because that's what they'll dig into. So somebody will get paid. Yeah. I guess. I guess. OJ's retirement though is anywhere between like four thousand a month to ten thousand a month. Oh, see, I'd heard I'd heard even higher numbers it, than that. It just depends, and like he may have in his account, he may have hundreds of thousands of dollars in his account because he's in jail. And he couldn't spend it. it. Just depends on if he got it. If he when he um took out took it took out from his um pension. The uh, his daughter testified, right? Yeah, uh, I thought it was his daughter. I know his sister spoke on behalf of him. I mean, the dude. 
Seriously, when was the whole white Bronco thing? 94? 94. That's 23 years. 23 years this guy has... It's two and a half decades, bro. I mean, he kind of disappeared until he got in trouble again. And then even then, I was just like, really, OJ? Go go sit down somewhere. Like, don't, like there's better ways to handle it. And I guess, you know what, that's the best point because I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to say is once you got off of the first charge, I wasn't there. I don't know if he did it or not, but just popular opinion is that he probably got away with it. Yeah. And it was the fiasco that it was. The fact that you had to somehow find your way back into trouble is what is the reason why I'm saying he's not a productive member of society unless he's in jail. And then, then he's he's around people who he's actually sounds like he's actually helping. Like like I mean, at that point you just gotta duck off, man. What are you even doing in Vegas? He was at a wedding. Okay, tell me I can't go. If you want me to go, you can't be having weddings yeah, in Vegas. Just, I think it just it was a it was a per like he said actually that's what he said it was a perfect storm. A perfect storm? Yeah, like for what happened, like he's he was there at the same time. Like somebody told him that somebody had his stuff and was trying to sell it and auction it off. They happened to be in Vegas. He was in Vegas, and then he called his goons. I mean, he didn't even have a gun. He got a gun charge and didn't even have a gun. Everybody said that he didn't have a gun that night. If I ever that's that's my point on the uh, reality show too. If I ever see OJ again, it that just tells me that he is he hasn't learned any lessons. He's trying to continue the popularity. This isn't about him ducking off with his family and capturing his last half of his life in a good way. It, it, like it, that nothing about having a reality show says any of that. Like if, if you if you if you got parole and you moved down to Boca and we never hear from you again. That's the way it should be. You have spent two and a half decades in a negative light in the media. There's no need to be in the media. There's no. There's nothing you need to rehab. You're seventy, right? Okay, you're you're not thirty five. There is no career for you. You have your pension. That's why you live in Florida, right? There's there's no excuse on why I should ever see or hear from OJ's OJ again. I think the problem is. I think the problem is in the rehabbing your your um, image thing. I think too many focus on that anyway. He needs to just go live his there life. There ain't nothing he can do at yeah, this that's point. There's nothing. You either are for OJ or you're against, against OJ. But and it, there's and, nothing he can do to change And to be that. honest with you, that's typically how it is. Even with Vic. Like, you know, he's, I believe he's trying to get people for him. But you're either cool with Michael Vick now or you're still pissed off that he fought dogs. You're either for Colin Kaepernick or you're not for Colin Kaepernick. Is, I mean, there's some people who are in between, but there's really nothing they can, nobody can I do. Think, to- I think in both of those situations, though, I think that both of those guys, both positively and negatively, and Vic is the best example recently, and I actually want to spend a segment on this because I got some questions for you about this. Okay. But I, I think both those guys actually show that you can change, people's opinions can change if you both positively and negatively. And and I can look at both of those guys and, and, and tell you that they've both, I've been in that same situation, but my point is with O.J., that you're 70, and and you you've already proven that you the limelight isn't for you, dog. Like, well, what I meant more is this: if you do, if you live your life and you live your truth, and you're walking down the path and you're successful, that's what America has proven. Mm-hmm. America forgives success. They believe that success covers over your sins. So, like, there'll be some people who will always step back and believe stuff. But I mean, for them, at the most part, the reason why, Mike, like, even like with Kobe, when people thought Kobe was, oh, Kobe guilty, Kobe did it to that girl. Kobe was out there scoring, like Chris Rock, I think, was the one who said it. Kobe out that thing shooting 40 points a night. He's playing on the court like he's defending for his life. Mm-hmm. Like, as long as he was scoring points, he was going to have people who were like, you know what, he can't do it. There's no way a guy can score 60 points a night and, and have that on his conscience. Yeah. So, I mean, those are the things. That's what I mean. So, if OJ gets out, whether he does a reality show or whether he doesn't, if OJ goes to, down to Miami, plays his golf, I don't know whatever for seventy year old ex cons do. I don't know what they do. Eat some. But most seventy year old ex cons don't have a ten thousand dollar a month pension, unless they're mobsters, right? I mean, I mean, drink. I wish. I, mean, what's, what's I, I don't know enough Cuban about the coffee, legal. coffee. Drink some Cuban coffee. Smoke some cigars. I don't know enough about the legal um, system to know this, but I did kind of hear what he said in his parole hearing, 
And I wish that the judge could have or would have said, okay, what you're telling me is you just want to get out and get on about your life and spend time with your family and friends. So we're going to lock you back up if, we, if, if you do a reality show. Like, I wish there was something like that because what, what, what he's well, saying. Well, actually, what they can do is, is they can restrict who you have access to. So, like, known associates, certain things like that. So they could, the people that he could, quote, unquote, have a reality show and make it successful, they'll probably say you can't be around those people. I mean, that's the only thing they can do. They can't really, they want you to work. That's kind of the whole, especially when you're paroled, they want you to be doing something that occupies your time positively. Yeah. Like well, they let's, don't do want, let's take a break. I don't know what else you guys have on six points, but I do want to get on this Michael Vick thing. Yeah, sure. I do have some questions for you on let's that. Cut, let's cut to that. Yeah. I want to get on that on the other side. We'll be right back. Did you do Jay William? I'll do Jay William after next segment. Okay. Yeah, we got the uh, – Open update at the bottom of the hour. Um, who was that that was calling? What? Who was that that was calling? I don't know. Oh, okay. The phone was. Special report on the British Open brought to you by the NFL. Watch live out of market preseason games only with NFL Game Pass. Kick off your free on NFL.com slash Game Pass. You put up big numbers, but if the leaders do the same, there's not much you can do about it, and that's exactly what's happening today. Jordan Speed and Matt Kuchar get some separation from the rest of the field. Speed began the day with a two shot lead. He still has it, but he's working on a round of three under through 11 and minus nine, while Kuchar at seven under for the tournament. Rick's Kepka began the day three back. He's now four back, despite being two under through 12. Best round of the day is yeah, the best round right. ever in a major championship. No, no, Brandon God. Craig shot a 62. First man to ever shoot better than 63. Right. Eight under on the day to get to four under. Four, That's what Nicky Matsuyama just four, reached as well with a birdie on 17. No, Dustin Johnson, what? he's at three under. Henrik Stetson, both shot better than 65 <laughs> on the I day. Let him show more on Jason Horowitz. Westwood wants more. Stay home. So great. It ain't working, bro. Oh, no, it wasn't even with the girl. It was just chilling. <laughs> if you, if you like it, trust me. You don't got to spend all that money. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm going to give you perfect advice. It works. Don't call it for one day. Skip a day in between. Make a mom one. Yeah. <laughs> chilling. I literally cannot. Like, we'll stay on the show. I think they can I think that um Meek Mill concert got pushed back. Yeah, my uh you know Zach Big Dog from Big Dog Country. Yeah. I had uh invited him because for the uh SOT. How you doing? He told me about it yesterday that he got pushed. Cause we we was trying to double check on the daily place said in a tweet that concert for the thirtieth got postponed. It was like thirtieth. What is it? Real talking about? Oh wow. He he contacted the chief. The people that work there, and they kind of clarify what you know, what happened. But tonight is on more hires. Which is cool because I need to catch up on sleep. Tony Agalini said Denny is either going. He said Denny is either getting married, going to prison, or both. Probably both. What, what, what? Either getting married, or going to prison, or both. I'm going to be dressed like this on the street. Man, why? Why, why is she? Uh, why is she saying, why is she saying that? She was going to do it herself. Yeah, you got six or six months. Uh, 
you just say can some they be on the west side sometime during the week? I think that was it. Give me a specific day. This is the Sports Den on 1010XL 92.5 FM. You're listening to the Sports Den brought to you by ABC Fine Wine and Spirits coming to you from Thin and B Med Spa Studios on a hot Saturday. Um, I want to talk a little Mike Vick with you for a second. Okay. Let's just have a uh, a conversation. Like, just you and I. All right. All right, because I'm confused. Right. Um, we read the whole Mike Vick stuff Monday night. It was actually, I guess, it had just happened. Mm-hmm. And we read his comments on Colin Kaepernick, and essentially what he originally stated was that Colin Kaepernick's protest has nothing to do with him being blackballed or he wasn't being blackballed. It's his play. That's that, The last couple of years, that's not very good. And that's the reason why nobody's signing him. That was his original statement. Well, that was then he then immediately after that he's like, if you would just maybe he should go get a haircut, right? Clean up his image a little bit. Maybe that'll get him. Maybe that's what's affecting him. Okay, so um, here's my question though. What what is it that everybody hated that he said? Well, one. All right, it's a it's it's a twofold thing. I think everybody would have been fine with him just ending it. In, in uh, what he said first, it's a combination of what he said and when he s- and where he said it at. Who he said it to, and who he said it to, and with even Jason Fatlock, who is the king of saying of, of oh black person did something wrong. Let's go get Jason Whitlock to come on there and say and say why he's wrong and and why he should be defended because he's the guy who says what everybody else wouldn't say when he really just shucking and jiving on a national stage. If he hadn't, if he said this on another show. Maybe you wouldn't have seen that, but even Jason Whitlock gave pause to when he said it. Like, really? That's what you want to say? Michael Vick, king of coon rolls, when he played quarterback? And what, what happens is is he gave his truth. And Shannon Sharp on the same network really is the one who really brought it home. You don't have the platform or the authority to say that, Mike Vick. 
you actually you're giving him advice of someone who committed a crime and needs to clean up their image in order to get leniency from a judge, maybe apply for a job. There's a couple of things that are coming in this. Colin Kaepernick has said he would like to play football. Colin Kaepernick has also come on the record, is also the one who said he's retired because it doesn't look like he's going to get a job. So Colin Kaepernick is not the one who's putting himself in the news every week. Other people are putting are giving their opinion and keeping him in the news. Okay, but to me this is okay. I mean, maybe but, you're answering my question. Maybe it can't be like if Tony separate. Dungy said. If Tony Dungy says that exact same thing, he probably doesn't get hit with as much vitriol because Michael Vick was the guy. Because correct me if I'm wrong, was the quarterback who had two years off where he didn't get any training. He had pretty much two down years, worse than his because at least Gap played. Mm-hmm. Mike Vick went two years without being in the NFL. His knocks were he could not read coverage. He relied too heavily on his, his athleticism. Had a cannon arm. Um, could do some things. Would really need somebody to actually take a chance. It wasn't on him. accurate. It wasn't accurate. So what happened was somebody actually took a chance on him as a for league minimum, as a backup quarterback and developed him. If anything, you would think you would hear Michael Vick be more pro Kaepernick a little bit and say, hey, what he needs is a situation. If you would have said this, what he needs is a situation that I did. I had somebody who believed in me, brought me in, and allowed me to develop into the quarterback that could fit their system. What I did to do that was clean up my image. How I cleaned my image up was I got my hair cut. I started volunteering with PETA. I started doing all these other things. Much more palatable. What it sounded like was two guys who were kind of making light of the situation, which – I'm here to tell you, if people haven't heard of it, like just as much many people who said if Colin Kaepernick continues to play, they're going to boycott the NFL, that's starting to become the under, underground current of black America. It's starting to talk about like, – now, me personally, I'm not. But a lot of people are talking about they're going to boycott the NFL. And worse than that, they're going to put pressure on these black athletes who are not coming out and saying anything or saying more things like Michael Vick, and that was the, that's the reason. Black Twitter attacked him to show what's going to happen if you continue well, to that, speak out incorrectly. Okay, see, and that, and there's exactly where I'm going. Is why does it have to be like that? Why does it? Why can't a guy not say what he wants to say and going about his day? Like, Wait a minute, time out. That's exactly what. What? But it's that's what somebody just did. They they did what they felt was right. The NFL owners forget what the NFL owners have to say about Kaepernick. It's their choice. It's not them. It's everybody else. Why can't it be that somebody took a stand for what they believe in and you just don't no, agree with it? No. You just leave it at that. Okay, now you know where the I exact stand. Same thing you know where I stand with Kaepernick. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So, so I, and I'm not going back over that again. So you can, listeners can read in this how they want to. Two very different scenarios in my mind. Yeah. Ka- Kaepernick, Kaepernick took a, a, there was an action that he took a stand against something that he knew was going to be um, controversial, right? And he felt like it was the way that he had to do it mm-hmm. to get his point across. Mike Vick was given an opinion. Mike Vick was asked a question. Sh- but, you know, see, Shannon Sharp you're, saying you're saying that, but forgetting who Michael Vick is. No, I'm not. But I'm saying I'm like, not you forgetting can't, it all. So it's not just a person saying an opinion. It's a person who went through something very similar and is giving an opinion in a manner in which, like, dude, you don't have that right to give that. Why didn't he have the right? It's like, it is like Ray Lewis coming on and telling somebody, it's like Ray Lewis condemning OJ. You don't have the right, Ray. You can say it look bad. If somebody somebody brings him on media and asks him, he does have the right. No, no, no. You're right. In theory, you are right. If somebody asks him a question, yes, but if if that's his opinion to, to kind of jump on it, you have to know when you make that stance that it's gonna that backlash is gonna come, and you know how I know Mike was wrong because if any given situation, it wasn't a like one. Most people would do if if I know what I said was right, and I didn't go about it in the wrong way. You you know what I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna back down, and I'm not gonna apologize. Mike knows he was wrong because the minute the he did that choice though. Yeah, he, what, what is he? Gonna, he's not a he's not in the media. He's not playing football. He doesn't have to do anything. Like I mean, is he? Is he? I mean, I get it. If he if he was a commentator, he was a consistent commentator. I understand why he may have to either double down or or say what he or or say what he said, or or or, or apologize. But 
it doesn't affect Mike Vick one way or the other, unless he's really trying to get a job, which really explains the reason why he said it in the first place. The reason why he made his comment the way he made his comment on that show is because he's trying to get a job. And that's the way you get a job. You don't get a job being pro cap right now. You get a job saying the status quo and jumping on top. So of I read. OK, so I, the re- whole reason why I read that quote on Monday when I saw it pop up was because I was surprised that he had said it. So, right. so we're on the same page there. And this has nothing to do with Kaepernick in my mind. This has everything to do with Michael Vick. I just don't – I guess I was surprised when on Thursday I was seeing memes and 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 still Twitter messages and, and Facebook messages from all of my black friends. Not not mm-hmm. my white friends. All my yeah. black friends killing right. Michael Vick. Oh, killing him. Get, roasting him. Oh, he's getting the business. Over giving his opinion on something. It's, like, like, and I get, I get what you're saying, but, but James, there's a lot of stuff that I've done in the past. Now, not, not to the level that Michael Vick has mm-hmm. done. That I've done in the past, that if I heard somebody else was doing, I I would condemn them. Yeah. I would say you're wrong for doing that. You need to do this. It's called experience, right? But it's the it's complete. It's is the analysis of his football ability is where he has the credibility. And had he stuck with that, you don't think he has credibility on rehabbing on an the image? rehabbing the image? He's giving him advice of what a criminal has to do. Colin Kaepernick committed no. Crime. No, he's giving him advice on what he feels like he should do. Again, now he spoke his truth, but the thing is, is that's what you tell somebody. Like, if if I were going to, if if right now I had to go to jail, mm-hmm. the what somebody would tell me is, James, right now what you present, which is wrong in the first place, but it's perception. You present something that's scary. You have dreads. You're a big dude. I would recommend you cut your hair, wear a clean cut suit, shave your beard. Do these things. People talk, or they do that, or if you want to get a job. But the problem is, is that rhetoric isn't really necessarily true. There are plenty of people with hair. Colin Kaepernick has, it's not like Colin Kaepernick did not have hair. Jeez. He has had hair, he's had the same hairstyle. So what since if he Michael got a, Vick thinks this, though? But Why does that make him a villain? It's not making him, it's making, it's, he's not a villain. He's getting crucified for what he says, just like anybody would. When you go out there and you say certain words, or you say certain things, people will get would, on you. Would you agree if, or not? Okay. Colin Kaepernick doesn't need this advice because Colin Kaepernick don't care. But it, but if Colin Kaepernick came to somebody and said, all right, look, I got to get back in the NFL. What's the best way to do it? Would you agree or not that maybe changing a couple things could help? I would, the, things that you would, the things that you would typically tell somebody to do. One, if, some, if I have be, to come Play better. My, yeah, play better. That's the number one. <laughs> and again, that's what he said first, and that's what he should have just stuck to. But if I got to change my hair, like I get, I'm the wrong person to ask this. I quit a job because they asked me to cut my hair. And guess what I did? Made more money. But what most people would look at is, Cap, the biggest critique that people gave of you is that you're full of crap and that you need to stop just doing that and you need to do it off the field, put your money where your mouth is. And you know what he's done consistently since that's happened is put his money where his mouth is. He's only put $50,000 to Bills on Wheels. He's got a freaking... No, program, no, 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 no. I, I, but I'm I saying those. Are, so those are the things that you do when you actually are trying to rehab your image. What you actually, what you look like, if that's really what people are changing. Guess what? You could cut your hair, but I got news for you. If you, if somebody dislikes you and they dislike you for certain reasons, it does not matter what you do to your hair. I, it does I, not matter what he does. The people who don't like Colin Kaepernick are not good. They. He could do he could, he donates suits to people who are coming out of parole so they can get jobs. And you know what people say? They still talk about him kneeling for a flag. If you can look at that and still go back to the flag, I guarantee you a Philly fade is not going to make them. No, make them but any I will better. say this. I will say this though, and then we will we'll get to eight o'clock in a second. The fact that Colin Kaepernick grew his hair out, all that kind of stuff, as he was starting this protest. And it wasn't that way before. No, his, he had braids. He had he, corn. He did. He's he did. had hair. He changed his look, though. And and I think, I'm again, this isn't about Kaepernick as much as I'm looking at this going, okay, what Michael Vick said was, was stupid from a marketing standpoint for him. But I don't think he deserves the backlash that he's getting. I, I mean, it's the guy's opinion. And if you dig down deep enough, so, you can see – where it's coming from. Well, one of the things with opinions is this. It's just like feelings. It's like when I hear this, oh, I just express my feelings. Well, your opinion 
it generates other opinions. No, absolutely. So what what happens is the the beautiful thing about having a platform is you better be well ready to stand by what you said. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't. So what that tells me is it's two things. Either he's a liar and he's backpedaling or he just really didn't mean it. And what I think a lot of these people who nah, come out, I what I, or he may mean a sense I, of I it. Think, I, I don't think either one. I think I'll he's put, caving I, Actually, pressure. you know what? I'll put a perfect example. Jamel Hill, when she was trying to make her ascent, they put her out to talk about a situation that she went through that was similar to the Jameis Winston situation. Her situation was completely different from Jameis Winston's situation, but they put her out there because mm-hmm. of that situation right. to boost her up. That's what happened. No other people have to do No other, I don't want to say people, because no other race has to do this. Nobody else has to do this. Nobody talks about, and actually the perfect person who came out was Kyle Long. Kyle Long says, well, I guess my dirty mother was good enough to be on America's team. I didn't have to cut my hair to be on America's team. Yeah. And he stood behind Cap. Well, I don't. No, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. The thing I'm is, actually standing behind both of them right but now. I'm the saying Cap, yeah. Cap, don't, Cap, Cap don't, don't care. care. And he Cap, don't care. Cap is doing. And Michael Vick, simply all he did was answer a question that he was asked. And I'm his, t- his t- biggest t- fault is that he folded to the press. I'll tell you, and that's true. I'll tell you what I would have done if I were in that situation. I would have just asked him, why are we talking about Cap? Cap ain't done nothing. He knew in the news, talking about Cap when he got asked to be on the show. No, but that's my point. The point, then again, it's the where. It's the where he did it. I, I like to think we were big enough to do that. Had he come on this show and he said that, I guarantee you wouldn't have been as much backlash. But he went on Jason Whitlock, who has, I don't understand why every week he has to talk about somebody who is not playing football right now, who's doing his own thing. Now, I mean, again, I don't care what side of you stand on it because it ain't. It doesn't affect me one way or the other. I've got a I got a wife in the military who does not care about Cap taking the knee, and I know plenty of people do that. I get it about the, the the socks and all the other stuff. But bottom line is, if you're gonna say something, stand on it. Jason Whitlock went in the back pedal. No, he doubles down. No, and that's what I just said. That's his biggest. That that I think that at the end of the day, that's going to be more what this is known about is the fact that he's he changed on it than if he'd have just stuck to his guns or expounded on it. Like this is why I said it. Right, and maybe I should have said it better. Right. We gotta take a break. We're gonna come back with hate o'clock on the other side. I think you're gonna like it. It's actually a national hate o'clock that I just found. Uh, thanks to Dan Hancock, by the way. Oh, he's tweeting. always awesome. Yeah. So we'll be right back. I think usually when I talk about J. William Culinary, you think it's just some random chef over in Jacksonville cooking meals. No, this is the dude, man. This guy is like internationally known as a chef. And I'm telling you that all you got to do is go to jwilliamculinary.com and he will cook your meals. He'll prepare them for you. And then he'll send somebody to deliver them to your house where all you got to do is heat them up and eat them, you and your family. And it's not that expensive. It's no more than if you go grocery shopping and cook for your family. Go to jwilliamculinary.com, experience J. Fee. Jeff Ross 
roster here. Oh, that's so nice. All right, well, we're, we're, we're going into a completely different segment uh, coming up next. So maybe about 15 minutes or so you can, you can call back in about 15 minutes. Was he black or old or white guy? I guess we can't really check that. I guess we can't really check that. We thought him. We thought he was a 45 year old white guy from Twitter. <laughs> what was the Yukon kind of coach? That was really good. I told him that we were going to the 8 o'clock segment, and, you know, if he wants to talk about you, call back in 15 minutes. I know the big one that really started to come on the scene was when him and Charlie Strong went for the Harvard job, and they hired the guy who went four and eight from Iowa State. Yeah. Well, national championship. Yeah, it worked out. But, I mean, after a year, but I'm just saying, no other place would take two coaches with winning records. That been doing it for a couple of years and take a guy from a four and eight squad. Like nobody would typically. It's just crazy. Michael Vick is thought of as an Atlanta Falcon, right? Um, for the most part. Yeah, yeah, that's where he was made his rise. But they hate him though. They're starting to forgive him a little bit more. His five years with the highest quarterback rating were all for five years he was a quarterback. I agree. I believe it. He was a different quarterback. Though. Yeah, he the most. He, he threw for 2,900 yards in 0-2 in Atlanta. But he had like 1,000 yards rushing now, right? Or close to it. It's 777. But there, you're thinking of 06. 06, he had 1,000 yards rushing, 2,400 yards. But it's crazy to look at how many more yards he threw for. In his second year in the field, he threw for 3,018 yards and rushed for seven months. Did he make the Pro, pro Bowl one year in there? He should have. He did Completion percentage through the roof of Philly compared to what it was. Man, I mean, what's great to open this up for? I didn't realize it. He had years of 14 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 15 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. He had 13 fumbles, no fumbles. 12 interceptions, 13 fumbles. How do you have 13 fumbles? He knows the ball. Like, when he ran, he would do all of this stuff. He would keep the, the ball out. And that's that, was just his, yeah, that was just his passing. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was strip sacks. In 04, he had another three fumbles rushing. So he had 13 fumbles. No, 16 fumbles. That's over at 28 turnovers. Oh, no. He didn't lose all the fumbles. That's strip sacks. That's a mofo. Yeah. Lots of the things I want to consider in passing because he could be scrambling for a fight. Yeah. In a box representation. It ain't like he's all filled with it. Stop any IRS collection action and protect you from financial devastation. Call J.D. Tax Law for a phone call consultation at 474 It's now over at 474-5424 or visit jdavidtaxlaw.com. Peace of mind is only a click or phone call away. I'm D.P. Underwood of Keller Williams Jackson. It's interesting because, I mean, I think I always just assume Michael Vick's best years before he was killed. I think just overall, it wasn't his best years as a quarterback. But he had the most wins then, though, didn't he? You mad, bro? 1010XL, 92.5 FM. Join us in the sports den. Call or text 641-1010. Open up your heart and let that hate out. Hey, you know what uh, I'm not hating on? What's that? Is that YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel? Yeah. It's kind of sweet, actually, the way that. Shout out to our man, Don Johnson. Good job, Don. Um, remarkable marketers. I was trying to remember the name of this company. That's really bad. Go to sportsdenlive.com. You can go see what we talk about. We actually need y'all to start going. To, go like. Just go follow it. The shows are up there live. You know, we have a, we'll one day do this, this um, podcast thing. But our old shows are on SoundCloud too, so. We do need to get on that. I'll get on that this week, actually. Um, this is my last crazy, crazy week. That sounds good. 
I know. Um, eight o'clock. Every show today, we always do things that we're hating on, right? Mm-hmm. Let's do something that I saw this on Twitter. Dan Hancock had, uh, I guess, said something about it, so I saw the link to it. It's the most hated topic in every state, according to Hater, which is a dating app that matches people based on what they hate. Well, that's going to work out well for you. Well, that makes sense. It's bringing people together through hate. What do you think Florida's is? The Gators. Workout couples. You know what mine is? That means there's a bunch of fat people coming together because they hate fit people. That's not cool. You know what mine is? What's that? People who, who chomp ice and smack gum. Like who, it, it, wait a who, who what? Say chomp it? ice and smack gum. You don't like people who chew ice? I hate it. Ice is awesome. Dude, like, I hate it. What about it. the good like ice that I don't give care what Zaxby's. kind of ice it is. Or what's the other ice? If you're past the age of 10, you got no business. You know what Pops does? What? Pops chews ice and bubble gum. How do you do that? He does it. I don't know. You know, there's, I love Pops to death. Pops also was saying he smoked, used to smoke cigars and chew dip at the same time. Same smoke. time. Yeah. Like it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, Pops a different bird now. Um, I just can't, I can't, I can't get down with that. Like the whole... Smacking food. I don't like I just I don't like people who smack food. Oh I don't gosh. like people who taste their words either. It bothers me. Um this is state by state. This will be shocking to you. Alabama hates vegetarianism. I can believe that. I can see that. You know what Georgia is? What? Tuna salad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. I think it I think they may need a bigger pool. Uh um, like a bigger pool of people to pull from. But now Kentucky's got it right. What's that? Kentucky hates friends that ask you to help them move. Okay. Uh, let's see. Wow, South Carolina hates Edward Snowden still. The the um, WikiLeaks guy. Yeah, he, the whistleblower. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. I can't get down with Kansas. What's that? Seinfeld. They hate Seinfeld in Kansas. I mean, might as well be Russia. Kind of. Midwest is a lot different than New York. They probably just hate all things New York. Texas New hates. New York City. Texas hates sleeping with the window open. <laughs> Louisiana. <laughs> this is perfect. I was born there, so I can say this. Being the designated driver is okay. what Louisiana hates. I can get I can get down with that. Arkansas like hates cleaning. I don't like cleaning either. Um, Missouri hates people who believe in aliens. Isn't that where aliens like always go to the Midwest? In a weird twist, um, Nevada hates porn. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of people using the hater app in Nevada. Uh, I think it's like two people. Oh, know. wait. Maybe I was wrong there. Hold on. No, my bad. Nevada, Nevada hates feminism. I get it. Yeah. I'm not going to get into that. California, I can get with this. They hate fidget spinners. I don't understand it. I don't understand the fidget spinner thing. Oregon hates spin classes. I hate spin classes, too. <laughs> Idaho hates uh, asking for directions, which, by the way, this is testing my geographical knowledge because the states aren't on here. So I'm oh, having wow, to go, good yeah. job. We're going by the shape of the state, probably. And where it is. Um, New York hates Times Square. I can believe it. Just it's like Florida trail. hates Orlando. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Was it Vermont? Yeah, Vermont hates Eli Manning. Wow. Eli Manning is actually the the pick for an entire state. Wow, that's stepping it up. He's the only person. No, Edward Snowden. <laughs> Eli Manning and Edward Snowden are the only people that on people, this whole list. That are bringing, that are uniting, that are making, that are making couples through their hatred. That's hyster- I can't even read what Mississippi hates. Um, Iowa hates long hair on guys. So I I can't go to Iowa. Chica- or uh, Illinois hates biting string cheese. Oh yeah, because it's the fun. What's the fun in biting the string string cheese? You just pull it. What is, is this? Oh, Wisconsin, Michigan. Michigan hates trap music. Doesn't really seem like. Well, actually, no. Detroit got Detroit. A, Detroit. <laughs> Detroit got a trap. 
They, I'm sure there's some traps in Detroit. Uh, so they don't like your boy. I, wait, is what, that, what's the dude that you is said? That, hold on. What is Is that? Is that Michigan? Or is that? That's Scott. That's yeah. That that's Michigan, and that's Wisconsin. What is that one? I don't know. That looks like the lake. Are you sure this is? I, I sure know. That's the state. That's that's maybe what I was the asking. maybe the lake doesn't like Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go with that's Michigan, and then that one's Wisconsin because that would make more sense. So what does Scott Wisconsin would. hate? I think uh, Scott would know. That's where he, Scott's from. That way. Wait, no. Wisconsin hates trap music. Nah, that makes That's more Wisconsin. Sense. Right, yeah, the way that they've makes got more this. Sense. That makes more sense. Yeah, Michigan hates Pride and Prejudice. Okay. And then that's Minnesota drinking alone. Man, that's what that is. See, I really don't. No. Yeah. Minnesota's like Okay, so Canada. Utah, my bad. Utah's the one that makes more sense. Utah hates porn. Nevada hates feminism. Arizona hates sand. New Mexico hates polo shirts. Okay. Um,. Somebody hates in sync. Uh, what, what, what is that? I mean, sync's pretty good. I like in sync more than I like. Um, who who do How we? You gonna um, give me a map the United States and leave out of state? Nickelback. What in the world? Uh, let's see. Nebraska hates friendly reminder emails. So they just South Dakota hates New York Times. I believe that. Um. Uh, Montana hates going to the gym. To their defense, there's one every 100 miles. <laughs> it's pretty inconvenient. Um, to the gym in Montana. Maine hates boys' nights. Okay. Oh, dear. So they just... Hold on. Okay. Wow. Uh, New Hampshire hates God. So it's an atheist country. That or, would be a state. State, whatever. You know what I meant. They're seceding. They hate God. Wow. Um. So who? Who's Colorado? Colorado. Reggie. Colorado. <laughs> Colorado hates Reggie. They only want that premium. Oh, Colorado's gas. the one that hates NSYNC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Colorado's the one that hates NSYNC. Five five three. I agree with one of the things that he hates. What? I hate that that we keep talking about not us, but just in general. Everybody keeps talking about Cap every week, but I can't get down with his other hate. I love Hootie. He hates Hootie. Yeah. Oh wait, he hates Hootie and the Blowfish. You do you like Hootie or do you like Darius Rucker? Darius Rucker is Hootie. No, I, I no, met no, him. No, no. I met him as Hootie. Darius, and that's his name. Hootie, Hootie. Hootie evolved. It's like caterpillar to a butterfly. You don't like the yeah. I, no, Hootie wasn't bad. Yeah, but that, but I tell you who I hate now, <laughs> who I didn't hate Monday, who? Nickelback. Yeah, yeah, I don't like Nickelback no more. I see why. If that's what Nickelback was, that's not what I thought it was. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Dang dumb. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's an interesting one. Hawaii? They don't have many worries in Hawaii, right? No. They hate taking videos at concerts. I kind of get that, though. It's kind of like um like you're missing the live performance to take a video that you can watch later. But Alaska hates graffiti by the way. Where are you where? <laughs> where? <laughs> on a on a glacier? Actually, actually um at the new spot there's a chick um from Alaska. That's a trainer. You act like she's from like that guy I was like, so, wow. I'm like you're really from like I don't know what state this like, is. Alaska, maybe Alaska? maybe they tag moose like train cars. That would make Delaware, sense. hold on. I can't tell what so somebody hates the idea that everybody has a soulmate. So they just believe. Oh wait, there is somebody spirit. else in this hate. Casey Affleck. Who's that? Ben Ben's brother. Why sister. would anybody hate him? Because he's the less talented one. I don't know. Massachusetts hates jellyfish. I can ask some people. I know a lot of people from Massachusetts. See if they hate jellyfish. Pennsylvania. People who use money clips. Oh, no, this is absurd. This is absurd. Use a rubber band. One That's of those up top. I don't even know. I can't. I don't. There's, I think it's DC. I don't know. One of the Northeastern. Hates winter. Didn't move. 
then move. That's kind okay? of a dumb thing to hate. Like, if you're up there, you know what's kind of happening. You know what I hate? I hate people who live in the Northeast who hate winter. I laugh at them. Like, like for example, I, got a, I have a good friend, Kim, who's up about every ball, every time, like, they have a snow, and she's like, oh, my God, it's so cold. I'm like, it's like 63 here, dog. <laughs> it's freezing here. I was like, at 63. I was like, she's like, shut up. You don't have to always brag about. It. She's like, do I hit on you? Do I mess with you when you guys are in a hurricane? I say we don't mind hurricanes. I say it just depends on what category. I said category four and up. I'm terrified. Other than that, we're going to ABC Fun One Experience and having a party. Here are a couple more, and then I'll like, oh, get, we'll be done basically. Um, Ohio hates tying a tie. I guess that could be. I mean, which proves to you that these uh, dating apps are mostly men. Um, Indiana hates bloggers. Uh, where was the one that I just saw so I can go? Virginia hates dabbing pizza grease with a napkin. You know what? I don't like when people do that either. Don't eat the pizza. No, there's some pizza that. No, nah, it's with the part. New York style pizza is supposed to be like, you're supposed to fill your arteries clogged. I'm guilty. You have to fold. People who don't fold their pizza and they chop it up, it's a waste of good pizza, man. Do it I, the right way. I, I'm guilty. I don't even know what that says. Do your job. I don't even know what this is. What is forged food? Like F O R A G E D. Foraged. What is that? It's like you go and gather it. Food. You're a hunter gatherer. They hate hunter gatherers. That's Tennessee. I, I figured they would like it out there, like being a survivalist or something. Huh. I don't know. We don't really have to worry about that here in Florida. We kind of have one season. Well, two. Um, summer and February. Yeah. That's true. Gluten-free. Somebody hates gluten-free. Wyoming. I don't understand. I get it. I don't, I don't understand gluten. Like, I, I want I want my gluten. <laughs> like, don't You're going to go to the extra gluten restaurant? Yeah, don't take, don't take gluten away from me. Don't <laughs> offer me that. Do I look like I miss gluten? <laughs> Like, I've had some gluten-free stuff, and it tastes terrible. Like, I want to put a little, sprinkle a little extra um, gluten on that thing for me. Dang, Dom. So, dabbing grease off pizza is like eating a burger without the bun. Just order a salad. Nobody likes you or your low-carb diet. Exactly. But it, it doesn't mean it's low-carb if I'm dabbing the grease off. It didn't want feel like drinking a pizza. Just get that, uh. Yeah, give me that. Give me that grease. Five five three says he hates well done steak. I do too. You, you, I refuse to. I refuse to order you a well done steak. I'll go. I get a I, burger. No, I go medium well. I get you medium. No, you don't have to go rare. I'm not a rare guy, but I'm just not gonna cook a hamburger. It's gonna give you the same flavor. Mm. Yeah. Oh, let me see what. I, you know, I got time. All right, let's see what uh, – Tommy, what's up? Uh, forage. Forage food is the uh, – those hippies go out in the mountains or whatever in Tennessee and get those truffle mushrooms and ginseng and stuff and, like, peddle it, you know, like at the straw markets and stuff. And them Truffles are good. Getting like, yeah, well, I mean, that's forage food. They got dogs and stuff that sniff them out. You know, is it, is it wrong that I didn't know that? No, I, I kind of understood what forage means, but I don't really know. Like, he, Tommy just broke it down to, like, the actual – so there's Jeez. still people that go, like, go out and get mushrooms, and, like wild mushrooms and stuff? Mm-hmm. In selling. Oh, there's a market for everything. Kind in like Tennessee? In firewood. In the vegan, huh? in the vegan there's community. There's hippies in Tennessee? In ve- yeah. Loads of them. Up there Long in the woods? Boys. Got beards. <laughs> they got beards, he says. a lot of <laughs> You know what? People talk Most about moonshiners. People talk about moonshiners and stuff. But, like. How are they any different? Like they have long beards. They live off the land, and they're growing their own. Whoa, they're too cheap to whoa, buy their own. I'm, whoa. I'm not way saying anything wrong with way, moonshine. I like way moonshine. Way different from rednecky versus hippie. Well, you have long hair. Moonshiners have not, long it's hair. It's actually not that much They different. have beards. They He's don't go point. buy normal alcohol. They have to grow their own alcohol, and they live off the land. Man, good old boys. How about that? Give them a gun. They have a, okay, my bad. They have guns, and they're afraid that people mm. are going to take their guns, and they live off the land. Hippies are just happy. Hippies have high. weed and hug you. They eat their mush. Their mushrooms give you uh, magical powers. <laughs> they think they have a gun. <laughs> yeah, they think they have. They made an entire video game. That's what. If, think about. Think about Mario. <laughs> uh, y'all, dead serious. Look at. Look at. Think about Mar- Mario. Go, Scooby Doo. Go. No. Uh, go look at Mario now. After I just told you they, they're hippies and they're um, eating mushrooms and they'll blow your mind. You're like I can't believe they gave us that propaganda. <laughs> Appreciate it, Tom. Uh, we got to take a break. We're only like. 
six minutes behind. That's we'll, cool. we'll be right back. Do the Jack segment. Oh, uh, yeah. I about that. We're on one week four now, right? Yeah. And then we got to talk about our boy in the league. Yeah. It's high confidence. Love the confidence, though. Uh, Malik's was on the NFL. Oh, no, he's the Oh, okay. So we both got a one and two right now, right? Mm-hmm. Let me give you a better website to go to for depth charts. Yeah, I'm not doing that again. They go to our labs. O U R L A D S. Yeah, it was crazy. Like the normally, that's the only team that they had a really bad one. I was like really disappointed. I was like, dude, this is the the network. They laid off the uh, the guy. Yeah. Keep it over the you know. Happy. Yeah. I know the Jets were trading prior. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who did they trade for? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I actually just saw somebody put something. Oh, uh, God, no. They said it'll be the Pro Bowl. Yeah. Al Saunders is. Oh. Um, he's talking about Kyle Carr. Safety. How about that lineup quarterback? Josh McCown, Bryce Petty, Christian Hackett. Jason Vanderland, wasn't he the guy? Wasn't he the quarterback from uh uh not remember the Titans? Um what was the one that was on the MCV one? Oh uh, Varsity Blues? Yeah, Varsity Blues. I don't know. He's from Ferris State. You know what number they got him to sign? Right now? You said what? He played at Ferris State. Do you know what number they have assigned to him right now? 85? Yeah. Ferris State. Isn't that, um, didn't they make a movie about the guy? Oh, that was Bueller. Bueller. Well, I'll do a quick release, man. Let me see that. Have it up there. Hey, who's Tony? You are talking about Kyrie Irving. You know who Kyrie Irving needs to go talk to right now? Oh. Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb needs to tell Kyrie Irving, you just chill. You're going to make more money long term being on LeBron. That's true. Some kid asked him a question like his rookie year. The kid was like, "Like, are you gonna leave us like LeBron left us?" He was like, "Uh, I try to stay here as long as I can." Type answer.
TJ Coleman says, I'm not sure if I've ever seen Danny without a hat. This is the Sports Den on 1010XL, 92.5 FM. If you're in the market for a new home, or maybe you just want to refi, redo that kitchen or bathroom, or add on, or whatever you want to do, take the money and go blow it on a vacation. Whatever it is you want to do, Willie Smith at Willie Smith Home Loans is your guy. If you got VA availability, then you need to give him a call. He is the home loan expert for uh, VA availability. Willie Smith at WillieSmithHomeLoans.com or call. you can call. 429-3587. Jags, we are now in week four. We both have them at one and two. Mm-hmm. I've got them winning the first one, dropping the next two. You have them dropping the first two, winning the third one. Mm-hmm. So now we get to go to New York, October 1st, 1 o'clock, at the New York Jets, um, who will be rolling out either Josh McCown, Bryce Petty, Christian Hackenberg, uh, at quarterback, one of those three. My money's on Bryce Petty right now. Um, they have another quarterback listed, but he, no. They've got him assigned number 85. Yeah, I don't think he's going to. You can't let that man it. go through training camp wearing 85. I, I don't think he's going to make it through training camp. You can't let him even take a snap. I think he's, you know how you, you see hard knocks? Mm-hmm. And every year they have the guy that gets cut the when he's checking camp. in. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, unfortunately, I mean, I, I don't wish this. This is rude, man. man. They hand you your playbook, and then the Turk comes and takes it. Like, same, nah, it's like when they're simultaneously. Actually, you go to, why well, flying you go, in? You go check in at the hotel, mm-hmm. and then they you get your keys and stuff, and they come in. And they're like, hey, before you go to your room, coach needs to see you. And they're like, hey, we had to make some decisions. Somebody cleared up. That the veteran made stink. waivers, and then they, you know, and they get sent home before you even did anything. Uh, Kelvin Beecham. Is listed as their starter at right tackle. Okay. Yep. So there's there's hope. Uh, we got some on, um, you know, not Malik. Who will we'll be on um, getting that opportunity? Calais? Like our chances. Matt Forte is our running back. Pretty good. Uh, defensively, they're not bad. Defensively, Leonard Williams, I think, is, mm. if we're comparing, I think he's done better than our pick. Oh, well, the, yeah. I've done better than our pick. Um, Sheldon Richardson's pretty good. Um, Muhammad Wilkerson. That's I, I'm gonna say the drama. Jags have to win this one. They they they, they have to. There's roster wise, you look at the Jets and the Jets have got to be in the bottom three or four in the NFL in the roster category. Their roster hasn't been any good for a while. It hasn't. I mean, you, if you if if what you're saying with the Jags is, um. It all rides on the shoulders of Blake Bortles. You got to have a good quarterback to win football games. Then we should win this one because I'll take Blake Bortles over Josh McCown, Bryce Petty, or Christian Hackenberg. I'll take a lot of people over them. Uh, that's kind of my point. But I don't. Yeah. I don't see any way that I could pick the Jags to lose this game. No, I got I, Jags are. I mean, Jags are one. you're looking at now two and two. Headed to Pittsburgh the next week. Um, sign me up for that right now. Sign me up for two and two through the first four right now. I'll take it. I'm with it. They're two and two. I, I mean, Ryan you know there win. are some Jags fans that's looked at this and went, okay, we're at the Texans opening week, we're going to win. Then the Titans got to come to us, we're going to win. We're going to beat the Ravens. You know there's Jag fans out there right now going, oh, we're going to be four and up. Yeah. I'm- like, I think if you're a reasonable Jags fan, 
and somebody offered you the deal of first four, two and two, or play it out, I'd take two and two. Yeah. So now you're you're a quarter through the season playing 500 ball, which in a division that nine, ten wins may get you uh, in the playoffs. Ten wins, certainly, right? Yeah. Nine wins may get you in. So. Ten wins, definitely. Nine. nine who are, first team to nine and seven. Or was that last team? year or last year? Who nine, was? nine and seven, nine and seven, eight and eight. Wasn't okay. Then bottom yeah. three and thirteen. Yeah. Um, you got to win this one because if you don't, you got to go to the Steelers the next week. Um. So I mean, you have to win that one. You come out of those first four, the first quarter of the season, anything less than two and two. Haven't played one real home game. Um. Buzz is going to be gone, quick. In Jacksonville again. The only buzz you're going to be getting is from ABC. I got a question. I got an answer. Jags go six and ten. Okay. Do you take Buddy from Louisville? Who? The quarterback? Yeah. No. Mm-mm. I don't know what that noise is. Is that over. rain? Or is that air conditioning? I don't know. Sounds like somebody's landing on a roof right now. If that's rain, we're going to have a five-hour show. If, if that's how long the hour for long, that's faster. Yeah. But now I was just wondering. I'm curious with that because no, I don't. I don't take him. I don't. I don't. But um, we just got three one eight just texted. Let me remind you that our defense um, puts her hands around people's throat, make it, and it's hard to score on seventh and three and out. So let me remind you three one eight that we were three and thirteen. We also. It seems like our defense did that to us, and other teams' defenses got mad and did it to us as well. So, like, we were – we had a lot of three and outs. Yeah. I love Jack fans, though. I, I mean, I really do. I, I, I'm i being serious. It It's – I love that Jack fans can, uh, can send us a text like that. Let me remind you without remembering that they were 3-13. and 13. Yeah, I, I, that's that's really the easiest answer. Let me remind. What if? I, yeah, hey, we were seven. And, we were seventh and three and outs. What if I told you <laughs> that we were three and thirteen? Uh, and not just is that your phone? Yeah, uh, yeah. Some people don't realize that I do. I'm on a radio show. Three one eight says, just think about what we'll do this year with the improvements. What 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 improvements? Offensively, okay. If I let's just say that I agree with you defensively, but what 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 improvements? You talking about Fournette, or you talking about all those massive improvements we made on the offensive line? Because that that's not it. Brought a rookie in. Um, what 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 specifically improvements are you? What what specific improvements are you speaking of? Three one eight. Oh, are you talking about how we changed the entire coaching staff? No, we didn't do that either. What about this, the um, the secondary and the play calling? Oh, my bad. I forgot. The D coordinator said that's not changing. We're going to call the exact same defense that we called that. The two, that, that 50% of the secondary doesn't agree with. I got to give it to Jacksonville. I got to give it to the Jags. How do you – how do you make people believe this stuff? Oh, how actually, do, no, no, no. Tom, how do we always say about this year, this year, but when a player messes up, we bring up, all the past or anything else we bring up the past. But when you're trying to make an objective, like actual analysis of the team now, you can't base upon what you what you what, what they've been. You can only judge based upon what you've done now. And if that's the case, hey, what about Houston? What has Houston done this year? This year, Houston has done a little bit better. So what has Tennessee done this year in the offseason? If yeah. we're only going by offseason. We have to if, if that's what we're going to base it on. We have to be consistent. That being said, I don't care who you are, two and two, in four games for this year as a projection, man. If you've been listening to us for the last the last um two years we've been on, that is great. That yeah. is way well, optimistic. Let, let, let me let me read a couple of the texts that have just come in. Three one eight. Same guy says the optimism is optimism is that Cam can start very well at left guard or any guard plus Albert. Okay, so the optimism is that we that's the big change. 
we drafted a left tackle. We're going to move him to left guard, and our left tackle is going to be a guy who held out and hasn't played in two years. That's the optimism, James. Yeah. 553 five, says, you guys truly think the Jags going to get to seven wins even when Vegas says no and they've been right the last five years. We haven't gone through it. I don't know what they're going to get. We both, when we initially looked at it, said about five. We said Vegas was dead on a couple a couple weeks back. Yeah, I'm not – I don't really – I got to keep going week by week. Maybe I'll get some optimism. Maybe I'll like the matchup a little bit more then, but, I mean, it's pretty easy. It's okay. Mm. I don't know. I'm starting to get frustrated, man. I think the whole city's starting to get frustrated. Even though – if this was a year ago or two years ago, this text line would have blown up with optimism. So now it just the just the trickles that we get in shows you that everybody is fatigued from losing. I mean, it's cool to be – I mean, I'm not I, I'm not diving all in again. Actually, I don't think I've ever truly dived in. But even when – was it last year I said four and a possible, but the year before that I was like, if we went five games, we'll have a parade. Mm-hmm. So, like, but even that year I was like, you know what? Or no, no, it was last year. I was like, you know what? I'm saying four and a possible too, but I'm like, I know, we, I know they're gonna prove me wrong. I'm waiting for them to prove me wrong, and then and they didn't. They didn't. So yeah. I'm sorry. Well, Maybe what we, you can, but what you can be optimistic about is the prospects of that new house, of that dream home, and the way that you can be optimistic is we got your dude. All right, we 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 got your guys. We got you guys covered. We got your back. You just give Willie Smith a call. Let him walk you through the whole process. Now, you don't have to just go for it based upon this year's results with him because we got you with Scotty Tuhati on that. But what we have is is 10 years, 10 years of guaranteed proven success, especially if you're in the VA. If you're a military guy, he's got a little military camp going on, show you how to get the most of your uh, most the most mortgage for your buck. But anyways, if you're not, call 429-3587. Go to willysmithhomeloans.com. Well, let's do this. On the other side, let's stay with the Jags' optimism. I'm going to read. These texts are just flowing in now. I'm going to read from the Duval Ford text line a couple of the texts. Um, and then we're also going to get to Malik Jackson's optimism. I mean, Malik's – hey, that's our boy. our boy. and I love it. Yeah. We'll get to that on the other side. We'll be right back. One thing I learned is only bet on sure things and be optimistic about them. One sure thing is Willie Smith, part of the Hamilton Group at WillieSmithHomeLoans.com. What you need to do is call 429-3587, and he can help your prospects on getting that home loan. Whether you're one year, two years, or even six months out, what you need to do is go through him so he can walk you through the process and give you a playbook so that you can get that mortgage, so that you can get that home in your dreams. Again, that's Willie Smith Home Loans, 429-3587, and MLS 834-932. Yeah, it's starting to get good. Real estate solution and Roland Plumbing, where quality and experience God, that is right. Okay, what's your next? Is Willie Smith? Nope. Last year's Open was a two-man race on Sunday with Henrik Stenson and Phil Mickelson, and this year's Sunday looking like it will be a two-man race as well. Jordan Speed, ten under par, playing the sixteen. I forgot that the uh, British Open was going on. on. One stroke in front of Matt Kuchar. He's minus five for the round and nine under for the tournament. But then it's four strokes to anybody else. U.S. Open champion Brooks Kepko alone at third and five under. Just in front of the man who earlier today set a record. That's Brandon Grace from South Africa. He had the first to ever shoot 62 in a major championship round. 31 times someone had shot 63, but never a 62. He's minus four for the tournament tied with Hideki Matsuyama and Austin Connolly, 20-year-old from Canada, playing the 18th. On a three under round. Dustin Johnson shot a what six under. He's minus three so under Stenson. Top five as well at three under with this British Open report. I guess Sue was not going to well. Here's the scoop on garden food. Sometimes it needs help from Home Depot. We're back to the Miracle Pro Grows. We're going to learn a special buy. Three is ten bucks. It improves the existing soil with nutrients the plants need for stronger roots so they'll get the ground running and start it with a much better ground. Miracle Pro Garden Soil. Three back to Scott's 
you the watch any of that or not. Last chance you? you can now get an no, we gotta get on. on the smoke detector well, your I'm not just gonna get the on. I'm hitting my phone. Brian Williams likes the new studio. Mike's having fun with you? Technology to help Mike is the Michael is the Oh, is it? It's the same next to that. We're here with Salem, owner of Travel Camp RV. Why are so many people buying RVs? They're bringing their families back together for fun getaways. Do you some phones? We specialize in No, no, no. I was saying, I was asking if you don't. See, it's stuff like this. That, this is why this is what makes people mad. Read the top one and somebody ends up doing something extra. That's who he was. The dad from Home Alone. Make sure you hire a licensed and respected roofing contractor like Carlson Enterprises. Call 855 91 Roofing. 855 91 Roofing. The Drill. Mornings on 1010XL 92.5 FM. I'm Blind Jack O here. And ever since I've told people about USA Park, I've ditched $3 a day, first time user per month. They always call and thank me. Log on to USA Park. Instant Keys offers honest professional locksmith service for lost, broken, or spare keys. Call Instant Keys at 722-1111. Get dealer-level service in just minutes at a fraction of the cost. 722-1111. Should you have your carpet clean to impress a potential home buyer, to impress your guests, or just to impress your spouse? Have Zero Red clean your carpets now. 287-5727. Zero Red. Built backwards or forwards. It's the right way to clean. Hi, this is Lisa DeVoe and Easton for Freedom Boat Club. And we're going to get a traffic update from our reporter, George, who's navigating through downtown somewhere. George, what's it looking like out there? Looks beautiful, Lisa. I'm near I-95 approaching Main Street South. It's clear cruising and wide open as far as I can see. Wide open? George, what's going on? Where's all the traffic? Traffic? Oh, you mean like cars? Oh, yeah, it's a mess out there. They're backed up like always. George, where are you? I'm downtown enjoying a beautiful day on the St. John's River, courtesy of Freedom Boat Club. George, aren't you supposed to be reporting on today's traffic? Oh, that got old quick. Too stressful. The city looks much better from the river, enjoying the affordable yeah, hassle free right. benefits right. of Freedom Boat Club. Yeah, right. George, there's a major tie-up on the northbound interstate that could last for hours. We need to get out there. Sorry, Lisa. No time for that. <laughs> Josh Hobbs says, looks lit. Looks lit. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to stare at her phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, it'll be, it'll be all three of us standing up fine. You don't really have oh, that your phone? Yeah. What is, uh, where's your shooter at? Uh, I'm just, uh, standing at some oxygen and carbon dioxide. Uh-huh, yeah. The Sports Den on 1010XL 92.5 FM. I hadn't heard this in a minute. Love this song. Do you? Yeah. I watched the first couple episodes of uh, Last Chance U last yeah. night. Um, I like it better than the first season. We, we got, Angie and I got two episodes in. We're going to watch some more later. But uh, I just sent DeAndre a message and his dad trying to get, going to sure. try to get him on. Yeah. You know he's good. he's like f- the feature. Yeah, I know a couple people have been talking about it. I was one of the seminal um, groups that I'm in. We're just like, man, DeAndre Johnson was was special. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm liking? I can't even remember the name of, but the Doctor the Doctor Dre Jimmy Iovine documentary. Yeah, you were telling me about it. Like, dude, it's just like it's on Netflix. I forgot. Like when people talk about music, does have power. Some sometimes I kind of like play it down, but they're going through like the '80s part, like with NWA, and then like the Ice Cube. Not not are we there yet? Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. Not even Friday Ice Cube. Like mm-hmm. 
Ice Cube, Ice like, Cube. Like, still fresh from the streets. Ice yeah. Cube. Yeah. And I'm like, man, the music was just, and then I'm thinking about the cop in the neighborhood, and then I'm listening to this stuff, and I'm like, man, let me change this. Get my mindset right. Cause is this it on is Netflix? Really, it's on HBO. Oh, I don't believe HBO. But it's, um, I mean, those guys. Were, and then even Jimmy Iovine, like, the songs that you, like, he's got to still be getting paid. Because all of those songs that he was the producer for are on, like, classic rock radio. They just play them over and over again. Yeah. Heck, if you listen to 1010, they're probably playing the song that Jimmy Iovine produced as a, as a preview to most of the segments. Hey, 415 on the Duval 4 text line hit us up, said, just turned on the radio, and I was thinking, how are you guys not on every day during the week? Better than 90% of the shows on the weekdays. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you, 415. Appreciate it, but I'm liable to say anything, so it's probably call the station. Probably for the best. Hashtag more than live. Yeah. Um, we'll get to the Duval 4 text line in just a second. Um, there's a lot of positivity about the Jags on the Duval 4 text line. But none of them more positive than our boy, um, Malik Jackson. Malik was on some podcast, which is exactly where Malik needs to be, by the way. It's yeah. a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He can say whatever he, talk, he, he wants to. That. Say whatever he wants to. Live radio. Yeah, Malik. Calm down, brother. Um, yeah. But uh, he said the Jags are going to win the Super Bowl. Let's go ahead. Read the rest. Do you have the art? Do you have the quote up? No. Okay. He says he said more than that. He said that's how I believe. That's what I believe, and I'm going to keep believing it until until proven wrong. Like so, like the the headline just reads Malik Jackson says the Jags are going to win the Super Bowl. And I'm like, God, he's on that Kim Dichie. He's on that. <laughs> like he's just saying that. I mean, granted, no matter how we feel, and it's our job to predict and. And you know, make all this stuff happen. It's harder to predict positive if your players are going around saying, "Yeah, I think we're on. A, I think, I think we're a three-win team. I think we're that, a no, that's true. I think yeah. we're a, we're about a four-win. I don't want players being objective. I want them thinking every week they're going to go out and beat the opponent that they are. I don't want them telling the truth. I, I want them to believe in that they have a shot. Now, I will say this: uh, the first time we met Malik. We both came away pretty impressed with how adamant he was about a winning culture. Yeah. Like, I mean, and it's not like we met him in a press conference. It's not like we met him like – we we met him through a mutual friend and just chilling. Could have said anything you wanted to say. Um, But he said – the first thing he said was, we got to establish a winning culture and I'm here to win. And the next thing he said was, I want to get involved in the community. Like yep. – I mean, I appreciate the the comment, and, and I think at every level, I think there's high school coaches right now, college coaches right now, NFL coaches, players, all that kind of stuff that start practice in the next week or two that all of them are going, we got a chance. And if you don't have a chance, that's a sorry, sorry, sorry life to, to live. You don't have a chance at all. Yeah. right? You, you have to make yourself believe that you have a chance. Would it shock me? Forget the Super Bowl. Would it shock me if the Jags went nine and seven? I think that's possible. That's more probable in the Super Bowl. Right. I guess it wouldn't shock. Like, I wouldn't be over here going, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Because if they go nine and seven, that means that Blake probably had a pretty good year. Actually, to be honest with you, they are a team that if they do get in the playoffs, the only way that they're going to make that happen is playing good defense. It's Coughlin ball. Mm Mm-hmm. Like how he did in New York. is playing good defense. Dominant D-line. Do, yeah, dominant D-line. Solid running game. Quarterback doesn't make mistakes. Once you, If that's your formula, if you get to the playoffs and you can make everybody else play to that level, the problem is there's a little team that you're going to have to travel to that's a little further north. A little, little further Man, north. Man, you jump way ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, no matter what. If they do make the playoffs and they do make a run, it doesn't matter what. Their defense is really good. But I've seen this. I've seen these guys take. Actually, and this isn't an exaggeration. They've taken a lacrosse player and a guy that worked at Popeyes, and they have won Super Bowls. There's you, one guy though that that's been able to beat them. That's true. One guy, and but we he, we've said since the time we got this show that the formula for success defensively in the NFL is being able to get pressure without having to blitz. At that point, if if if, if we're talking about week six or seven, we'll know. 
will know a lot about this defense and how dominant it is. If Calais, Malik, um, Fowler's not throwing people's liquor in the in the in the ocean or whatever. Um, Yannick is doing his thing. Uh, I think Shel- um, Sheldon, Sheldon Day. Day. Yeah. We have like they had four guy four defensive ends that could start anywhere in the NFL at that point. I don't know if we have that yet. I know we have some really good guys, some that should be dominant. But we'll know about we'll know about week six or seven and what they're doing. Okay, eight six eight. He says you're talking about players always thinking they can win. That's how fans should think as well. Okay, think that way if you want to. But we're not. Uh, first off, you don't control raising, anything. Yeah, eight six eight. Raising my hand. I'm not a. I I have to talk about them. We're 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 Team Jameis in my household. Well, that's we're just Tam, ridiculous. We're, we're Buck Gang in my household. But two fans can think however you want. Our job on radio is to tell you like, hey, this, we is, think. this is what we think. And I, I, we appreciate you listening to what we think, and we're having some dialogue here, but I, we're only giving you our opinion based on it. I want them to be successful. I want them to win. But I just, I mean, two and two is good. 500, you're in the game. Yeah. We just, the, the first thing that we should actually, even as a fan, I'm going to tell you this. This is what you should be thinking about. Don't go Super Bowl yet. Don't think that far ahead yet. That's good. That's a goal. If you want to, do hey, it. If you want to, if that's always to, the end goal. Do it. What my first goal is, is to play meaningful games. I'm not even going to go December. Get to I want to play meaningful games in November. So I want to feel like I have a chance. After we get to November, okay, cool. I feel all warm and fuzzy, even though the, the weather outside is getting a little frightful. It's getting Christmas time. I want to f- play meaningful games in December. Oh, I'm sorry. It's rare that I read something that makes me just – have to reread it on the text line, but I just did. This oh yeah, that's awesome. That's 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 an analysis that nobody three one eight literally just said. No, the fact of the matter is, and this is in all caps. Blake's ceiling is higher than Eli's. The guy won two. Super- what the guy won two Super Bowls? What? How high are you? What? Yeah. Holy cow! I mean, you know what? That's a uh, that is good weed. I don't really know what to say. To that. I, that is good weed. Eight, I can rock with you now with your blind optimism stuff. I, I fine because they've given us no reason to be optimistic, but to say Blake's ceiling is higher than the guy who's won two Super Bowls. Three one eight. You need to keep listening. You are the reason that ABC keeps recontracting with us. Keep keep going in there and telling them that you heard about them through the sports den. He said Blake's ceiling is high. Like, nobody. I don't even think Blake, I don't even think Blake comes in and would say that. Blake just said, I'm a pretty good quarterback, and I, and I like to hang out. Holy cow. Well, I mean, you've seen the stuff that comes through the text line, and it doesn't phase me. I almost just jumped out of my chair when I, I read look, that. When I saw your eyes, I was like, what? What, <laughs> yeah. Stop. Ali. Man, what happened here? I thought Dom said something crazy. And Dom never, did say something crazy Dom's that we never can't read. Seen, Dom's <laughs> never, Dom may have something that we can't read, but yeah. Dom's never said anything that crazy. Wow. Oh. But you did give Blake a compliment today. I did? You did? This is the first time I've ever heard you say another team that, that we have a better quarterback than another team. That's true. And that's a big compliment. I'm still stunned. I don't think there's anything that somebody could have – um, written us that that would have stunned me more. There's only three teams that we play that our quarterback is better than, and he's now he's trying to justify it. Eli didn't have to throw as much as Blake has, so how can you measure by what I see? Man, listen. So we, how are you talking about ceiling with a guy who's four years in the NFL? Time out. We talked about this on Monday. No, we we're not breaking deck. We we're in the middle of something. We can't talk. <laughs> we can't talk about ceiling here. Here's what. Here's what you say. Never in the history of Eli Manning have they ever had to stay back in his year four, five, six, year two. You know what we need to do? We got to simplify the offense so that Eli can be successful. That lets you know about the ceiling. Everybody's e- jumping on three. Like I mean, now. my man has. My man said came to the coaches and said, coaches. Maybe we should simplify. Take me out of trig and put me back in pre-algebra <laughs> so that I can get an A because I can't I can't get these things. So, I mean, hey, you yeah. know what, though? Believe what you want to believe. Yeah, it's That's good for you, 318. America. Yeah. Yeah, I won't even read the text coming in about that comment. We got to take a break. When we come back, we'll wrap the show up on the other side. We'll be right back. 
Wow. Hey, you guys have about a minute. One minute? Nice. Cool. That is how you say it. <laughs> that is how you play it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Only thing better than that is having Comcast Xfinity commercials and having Direct TV in your studio, so you can't watch. <laughs> Direct TV with the signal out. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's yeah, the only. That's the. <laughs> this is great. My phone's about to die. Three one eight. Gladly, if you're hey three one eight, if you're on Facebook Live, he just texted us said. Please remember me when the season starts. That's all I ask. Inbox Sports. Okay. Inbox. We will. Let, let, let me make this suggestion for you. Remember, You remember what you said when the season starts. You call us. 318. Because that's how it always works. We don't ever hear from these jokers again when they're 2 and 6 going into week 9. Dolphin Gary said that the Dolphins are going to win the Super Bowl or something or win, win their division. I ain't heard from them since. There's a better chance than not the Dolphin areas. Perfect trajectory. Not enough on the street. Not enough strength. In there. Trying enough to, I got, a, got a, too much finesse. <laughs> trying to be like the Golden Skin Warrior. Oh, man. I had the perfect thing about the wrong ball. I was posting this. I posted something. I was like, y'all been bashing this gold. My brother, the Golden Tooth Warrior is winning. <laughs> Actually, now you'll have less than a minute. I was so stinking busy this week. I didn't know. Like when you text me, I had no idea that was going to go. I'm like, dude. So maybe I was maybe as a kid talk about it. Like I'm gonna like, I, I didn't listen to any other show. Like I should have listened to the show yesterday to see how they covered it. Yeah, because it was crazy. Like when I saw him, like is this real? A week before the season. Josh Hawks replying to the 318 says that means that his ceiling is low. Is, you guys will have less than a minute. <laughs> 205. So was that Dave Caldwell texting from a burner phone? <laughs> you guys will have less than a minute. Basically, I'll be rolling into the outro music out of Jay Z. So pretty much we'll be done as soon as the as soon as the clip mm-hmm. is done. So, hello. Uh oh. Bang! Do we have um, generator? a generator? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> At least I think we do. So I see that go off. I'm like, yeah. I wonder what's yeah, plugged into it. I wonder what's plugged into the generator. Maybe we'll, we'll be done. done. Maybe we won't have. The 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 yeah. <laughs> the yeah. The refrigerator turned down. That's good. You know who's gonna call. Um, not Tom. Tommy already called. Who's the Tommy Sam? I know we're not gonna use it, but if you could like uh, get out of the uh, phone system and reboot it, just so it will be uh, ready for the next. Where's that at? Oh my God! Here. Is it the comic stack or just yeah? Comic? Oh my! Goes <laughs> <laughs> down the bar <laughs> I don't even know. It got stuck in my hand. Pass that. Dude. Wait, it ended up out there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, stuck to, I can't it Somebody got stuck. Stuck to my hand. No, you, you lose your black card with that. <laughs> See, it's, it's, the, it's the way I got a ball though. The wind catches it and it throws and it goes on. Have you ever seen a thing? I, I've shared it a couple of times. And it's um it's one of the doll it's, it's like one of the little um, um puppet muppet things. And he's like, I suffer he's like little people people don't understand that one in every four hundred black people suffer from the ability to not be able to play basketball. It's very embarrassing disease and it's very something that nobody that needs to talk about. I'm at the park and my friends always pick me to play, thinking that they got the guy that's gonna help that they're gonna win. But no, they're wrong. I can't ball. I don't know, Josh. Call. I don't know. He just called him. autism. I'm talking about, hey, you're talking about uh, Eli. This is wrong. That's true. 
like what a boss yeah. is one dimensional. Cool. No, no, not that part. Well, what is everybody that? Exactly? We have more earlier, Josh. We got to be like seven or eight. Eli is a special one, probably one of the worst quarterbacks to win two Super Bowls. True. That being said, the less acuity to win two Super Bowls or more, yeah, they're all better than the world. I need to stop. I need a drink. <laughs> That's what he just did. His rain is perfect for him. When you get a guy that has everything. Listening to the Sports oh, Den on 1010XL 92.5 FM. You are listening to the Sports Den as we wrap things up on a Saturday, getting our boat to leave. Yeah, this sounds like Noah's Ark out there. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. You know what they used to say? Like when you lie, anger's God. It's almost like 318 is pissed off everybody. <laughs> it didn't start raining until he started talking about Blake being better than Eli. <laughs> that was fun. We'll come back on Monday night. We'll come up with some stuff. I'm sure people will get in trouble by Monday night. Oh, yeah. It seems weekend. like everybody's getting in trouble now. Yeah. Yeah. So, thanks for listening. I'm Denny Thompson. That's James Coleman. Good job, Scott. Good job, intern, today. He doesn't have a name until he does something. No, so he's, he's got to do something. Yep. We'll, we'll talk to you on Monday. Have a great weekend. <laughs>